na katika kipindi chetu cha leo tutakuwa na special edition ambayo tutazungumzia mgogoro wa Niger pamoja na Ecowas. Anadhani ni swada muhimu sasa hivi ambalo lina trend uh, na pia ni swala muhimu kuzungumzia hivi vita vinavyotaka kuanzishwa na um, Ulaya kushirikiana na Nigeria lakini pia sio hivyo tu je um, East Africa iko katika um, usalama au iko salama uh, ikiwa vita hivi vitatokea kwa hiyo tumeona kwamba kuna muhimu na la kuzungumzia swala hili katika kipindi chetu cha leo cha Cyber Lounge lakini mbali na hapo uh, ni mada ambayo sasa hivi inafaa tujiulize katika century tunayokaa kweli Afrika tunataka kuingia vita vya aina hii lakini nimeungana na uh, watu wa Nigeria rafiki yangu mmoja ambaye ni yeye anagombea ubunge huko Nigeria katika Edo State na tutakuwa hapa katika open discussion ambayo kila mtu ataweza kuchangia kuzungumzia swala hili la vita ambavyo vinatarajiwa kuanza au labda vimeanza huko nchini Niger. Welcome to another edition of Cyber Lounge right here on Naji Media Center. Today we have a special edition and our discussion will be in English throughout right here on Twitter Spaces. Um I will be joined with a very good friend of mine from Nigeria. I've already introduced him, Stefan. He will be here discussing the involvement of ECOWAS in this war in Niger. And we will also open um, mics to anybody who wants to contribute. We are joined by our fellow Africans from all over the continent to discuss this very important topic. Welcome to Nudge. Media Center. Um, Grace, I don't know the um, queue you took, but I took a new one. So just, just go ahead, please. Go ahead, everyone, please. All right. So Peter will be is um, coming. You're next. Then um, I think I said hi, witness next. Then um, who else? I don't know. I'll take another one. Purity, you go after hi, witness. So Peter will be. You have the mic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Chick. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, wherever you're spacing from. Now, the, I, I requested the man, and I forgot the, the guy I was talking, you know, when he was talking about the, 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 uh, our educational system, you know, and most of the th those things, you know, there are some things in our educational system that has been unconsciously fused into our mind to see ourselves less than what we are. We're actually more, but this, this uh, system was built like that. For example, you, the, the colonization of the British, you have to learn English language. English language because you want to understand physics, you want to understand chemistry, you want to understand this. But we have language we could have learned we have our own language already that we could have used to educate ourselves. But they that gave you all those things, they still preserve their own. They preserve their own culture. Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is named after gods in the Roman uh, uh, kingdom. Thursday is after, uh, after, after the god of Thursday. So they have all these things preserved, but our own God, our own traditional way of doing, 
we were beaten down to see that as, as not good enough to be able to accept the colonized form. Now, why, do, why am I bringing this? The reason why I'm actually going towards this road is that earlier on this space, while we were talking, you know, and we are saying, what should we do? What should be the way out? A lot of suggestions were coming that if we want to go right now and say we want to go for a protest, because to me, that's what we should be doing right now. Everyone should be out because at the end of the day, when this whole thing happened and they say that, okay, uh, this is the people that strike from Nigeria, they are not going to say that oh, you did not support this one. The fact is that there's a, if there's a record Nigerian strike, so, so these people, and those people want to come back, they are going to come and avenge Nigeria themselves. It's going to be a reaction. You cannot stop that at that time. And until judiciary right now, give justice, which they are very, very adamant not to. They, they don't want to, they don't want to even think of giving you the dates. Up to this moment, we don't even know why there's no decision yet. So my own solution is the disconnects that exist in our educational system, we used to, we need to use that to drive this message. Now, earlier on, why I'm saying this, earlier on, there's a, there's a suggestion was that someone made that if we have to go by, by, by that, let those in the north, let those in the north start this protest first. I'm like, so you want them to actually feel the heat first, or as if the heat is not being felt around the whole of Nigeria. Everyone is feeling the heat. Even the APC itself that did not even vote uh, for this, they are feeling the heat more. And when this thing comes, this is have no respect. It will touch everybody. So, to me, the disconnect in our educational system has affected our mental uh, uh, status. It has affected us like to the point like everything black, you have to associate something evil to it. Think about it. Black Maria, you play uh, snooker, black ball goes last, white ball pulls every other ball. So at the end of the day, this thing consciously make you feel like, okay, this is not so. These things, this Western colony, colony. This is what this is. This is how they see it. So they use it to work on our conscious mind, and so that they can be able to dominate, and we forget ourselves. And that's what that's to me. That's this president right now. He doesn't care if anybody perish in Nigeria, provided what he secure his own power, he secure his own strength. He just want that ego like of being. Still being the president, he doesn't care who dies. So what are we waiting for? To actually know, until we are being, until the thing come to hit us directly, that we know that okay, until we no longer, I even like to even fight for the children that we care about. Is that the time that we want to talk? Which, as a matter of fact, as much as we are putting all the energy on Twitter, we should take it to the ground. Demand for this date, all all road leads to the judiciary, even the whole protest of no, no military in the G. If the judiciary do the right thing, we shouldn't be having all that. If they, if they stand and say, oh, give us a date that this is what we have to do, should we be, be saying that uh, 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 we need any kind of protest? They are not. They are not. So they are, at the end of the day, they know that if they sit down and decide, every all, with all the evidence staring at them in the face and with everything, they know they are going to disqualify whoever that did not get to that seat. So at the end of the day, they don't want to do that. We have to make them do it. Because why? whether you like it or not, something will come. It will touch all of us. And when it comes, it's going to be a ripple effect. Every other country that find that, that want to support the other people. Let me tell you something right now. Even the French uh, 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 colonies in Africa that are be coming together right now, if they should form a formidable force, nobody's going to come from Nigeria. That's something we should all know. Who's going to come for Nigeria? What, 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 what ground do you have to speak? A drug dealer as a president? Someone who was who is who is who, 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 who is globally mocked. So the first and foremost, nobody will even come. At the end of the day, these other people, they will have all the allies. So there's fire on the mountain. There is fire on the mountain. We have to start to see how we can. 
If the less informed, we have to inform them. Because I don't want to believe that uh, 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 I don't believe anyone is anyone is anyone is dull. I don't believe in that. Because why? If there is a disconnect in your education, you cannot get it. No one is dull. No soul is dull in Nigeria. Because why? I knew what I was when I was growing up. In my language, I was taught when I was in primary four. I was taught in my language. I was taught mathematics. Please round up. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Yes. I, I want. I want to. I want, the point I'm trying to make is this. What we should do, we have to educate the uneducated about this system. We have to push on the judiciary to do what we want. If not, Nigeria will not exist. So I'll yield my mind from now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Peter Obi is coming. Thank you for your submission. The truth still remains. Um, the protests that is going to happen in this country or let me say, the next protest that is going to erupt in this country, nobody would need to tell anybody to come out. You know, the third blind man say rain, they fall. Everybody knows the time. And when the time comes, we will not be the one to tell anybody to go out. The last time we did, I knew the efforts that we all put in to ensure that to happen. Nobody is, everybody is feeling the heat now, including those who elected this party into, you know, that elected these people, so um, it's not um, it's not rocket science. They would they would uh, they know when it's uh, when it's time. Nobody needs to be told. Everybody will be out there. All right. So um, eyewitness, over to you. Thank you. I appreciate. Thanks a lot. The space is interesting, and everybody is fired up. Yes, this is what we want to see. I'm actually from Liberia, and uh. My friend and brother was in the space, Cecil, who is next door neighbor from Sierra Leone. And we have experienced civil war. We know what is civil war. We have experienced military coups like Nigeria. We know what is military coup. But as Dr. Arikana Chomombo Kwe said, those coup d'etats are not coup d'etats. These are to enlighten our minds, to open our minds as the revolution has started. And we went outside there. We have the educational system, which they introduced to us. We have learned, we have educated ourselves, and we understand them already. We understand the European, we understand the American, how it works. So it is time, high time, we come back home and introduce this system because we're going to fight them with their own system. It is time. And um, I'm so excited now we are getting to a level where everybody is getting to know the reality. But I think we, as my sister was just saying, the protest, yes, it's, it's going to start when everybody is starving. But it is starting now and we need to connect to make sure this is realized. This moment is now. If we miss this moment, we're not going to get it. So we have to pressure our government, our so-called puppet uh, leaders, to succumb to our pressure. If not, we're going to lose the entirety of this generation. And we, the youth, determine what happened. We don't have to go in the street if we want to protest. I keep saying this from all the spaces where I, where I, I participated. You don't have to go in the street. If you have a good civil society, a good organization that is trustworthy, that the people trust, that when they say this, they're going to do it, all you need to do is go announce on the radio. We all stay home. You stay home for one week, you cripple our government. There is no way around it. People stay home. Honestly, everybody stay home. The government don't function. It scares them. It gets them worried. This is one of my suggestions here. And I also um, request, I'm kindly requesting we need to follow each other here. I think this is an honest, honest space. Um, Nigeria, it, Nigeria don't deserve the president they have. And we all know that. Tunubu was a drug dealer. He forged his educational background. We all know that. There are facts to this. 
and he was forced on Nigeria by the United States because they want to continue looting Nigeria and stealing from Nigeria. Um, the United States is one of our biggest problems. The Europeans are just there. They are also a, a, a vessel state. But what I'm saying here is America have to leave Nigeria. Nigerians have to step up and ask the American to leave. As long as the Americans are into Nigerian business, there will be no progress. Nigeria, don't look at your government. Look at America. America is our problem. Um, I am also want to stress on ECOWAS. ECOWAS, what is ECOWAS about? ECOWAS is to bring economic prosperity in the region. My sister, you just spoke candidly. Thank you for that. ECOWAS should have implemented economic growth through regional connectivity. I don't know if any of you understand that we used to have train system. We used to have refinery in all of the West African countries. And we used to have airlines connectivity in all of the West African countries. Can you please go to your closet and research? Why is it today you don't have a regional connectivity when you come to train? You don't have a regional connectivity when you come to airplane. We don't have good road networks. While we are still suffering without having a, a unique one passport system, which is an ECOWAS pass, passport that everybody recognizes whenever they see it, they know that you're from this country. Nobody should um, give you a hard time to cross to the next country. If we're going to have this prosperity of ECOWAS, what I'm saying here, without the interference of France, America, and the European, especially the Germans and the, 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 the British, and the French, these are the three countries that are responsible for, for our problem. Today, I'm going to be leaving Liberia to go watch a football match in Lagos and return back with a train system just like Europe and other parts of the world. Why they don't want this for us? Why? That is the big question. Are we not human? This is so shocking to me. Sometimes when I sit down, I look at all this infrastructural development are going to transform young people's life. When you have a train connecting from Liberia to Guinea, to Ghana, to Nigeria, all the way to Niger Republic, do you know what economic impact it's going to bring for young people? Integrations that are going to take place that will increase in economic dividend and make people to live a better life? Do you know how much? We all know this. Our natural resources. This guy from Sierra Leone, I don't know whether he understands what is happening um, in Liberia and Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone and Liberia have a huge natural resources deposit. Uranium, gold, diamond. How can you have concession where people will just extract your natural resources and take it abroad? And you have only 5% royalty in your own natural resources. These are being brainwashed. The BBC, the CNN, these are, these are people that would need to, to, to stop running programs in Africa. They are responsible for the propaganda that people are brainwashed in West Africa, especially, which are being brainwashed to the extent that they are unreasonable or even try to tell them the truth. So this is one of our serious issues. Um, our way of governance, democracy is a, is, is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Niger have choose their own democracy. It is the government of the people, by the people, and it's for the people. Mali have choose the same path. Burkina Faso have choose the same path. Guinea have gone that route. So what is a democracy? That is a democracy. We don't have to question it. You don't have to go to a ballot when you have Israeli companies that are all around Africa rigging elections for America. We have to find a way to govern ourselves without, we take the best in democracy and include it in our own form of government. It works. You take the democracy, which is our own way of, uh, we have our own way of governance added there. The best part of democracy added, which is like the freedom of speech which is necessary in any, any country. 
you look at the European setup, you have almost the entire Europe, you have monarchs that are running Europe from Spain to Belgium to Switzerland to France, the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom, when you look at England, is a state on its own. It makes decisions on its own. So we have to be wise up and know what is a government. Um, one of the, I want to round up quickly. One of the worst, worst, worst situation we have is a weak military. It's deliberately done. It's deliberately done by the West for us to have a weak military. Because when you have a situation like Niger, they will just walk on you overnight. If you have a strong military, one army, one currency, one country, forget about Nigeria, Ghana, this, you have the, the United States of Africa, you have a single currency, you have one army, a single current currency which is backed by a gold or our natural resources. All the Westerners will come to us and we have sound governments. We have people who make sound decisions. But because we have a weak military and they, they tell you who supposed to sell weapon to you, who you supposed to buy a weapon to you. If you buy a weapon to this country, we will sanction you. We will impose the hegemony on the U.S. dollar, which they've been doing for decades. I think we have to talk to our military guys that if they can build a better army, regardless of what you, Nigeria, if Nigeria invade Niger, no, no, I can tell you for free. Now, if they invade Niger, Niger will fire drones in Lagos, Abuja. There will be no peace in, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria is at the forefront. I know Nigerians are not behind the invasion, but Nigerians are at the forefront. So what's going to happen here is, Niger will definitely use drones in Abuja, in Lagos, and that will create a serious situation. Tinubu will be overthrown overnight. Trust me on this. It's going to happen. And um, I'm also calling, uh, calling on guys here. I think we, we have to continue this space. We have to continue to work together. And uh, I see a reason here why we have to keep each other now. This is the time we have to um, enlighten others, open others' minds, and educate them regarding the unity of Africa. Because Liberia was responsible for Africa not to unite. We have the Casablanca group, and we have the, um, how do you call them, the Monrovia group. When the Casablanca group decide that we have to have one Africa now, with Kwame Nkrumah and the rest, the Monrovia group said no because the Americans have already told them, no, you don't have the ASEP. You see, now you're enjoying, you have a government. Because, and all Africans were listening to Monrovia group because Liberia was the only country in Ethiopia that have independent. So we thought they have this pan-Africanism, not knowing that they are, the CIA already infiltrated the system and uh, convinced the Monrovia group to withdraw from the Casablanca group. So unfortunately, we never had the African unity. But this is a time. Now you will see Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. They will start discussing a federal state. And when that starts happening, they are going to be a serious problem for all Francophone countries because they are the ones who the French have been looting a lot. They suffer a lot. Country like Ivory Coast, I just want to name a few African leaders who are responsible also for most of our problem. Alassane Ouattara is one of the guys who capitulated for the ECO, the single currency, and he undermined everything and destroyed the single currency. That guy is our problem. And ECOWAS supported him for a third time in government. Re uh, he rigged the election and went for a third time, suspend the constitution. ECOWAS embraced him. Why? Because ECOWAS is just an American puppet and a French puppet. Whatever they want for it to happen, it will happen. It happened in Guinea. Um, what a guy named? Alpha Conde, the guy uh, capitulated the, the, the constitution and went for a third term. ECOWAS endorsed him and congratulated him. Four years, Singbe Yadema. You look at him, uh, um, how do you call a guy from, 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 from Benin? I think it's Benin, yeah. All these guys, they are going for their third term. Why is ECOWAS is not taking step against them? I was expecting ECOWAS to mobilize ECOMOG to have a vanguard force to start fighting terrorists to get them out of the region, not to go invade Niger. 
So this is not surprising to us. America is behind everything that is going on. And it's her evidence that they send Victoria Newland to Niger. She is the lady of war. We know that all over the world, she carry war in destroyed countries. Um, we have to stand up as a young people now. It is our time. Let's make this happen. And I think we, we need to get closer than ever. I'm appealing. We shouldn't listen to people who are just hungry around here um, for their self-interest. There are a lot of brainwashing that went on in Africa. So we have to get it straight. Uh, we have a work to do as a people. Um, I want to stop here for now. Maybe uh, you would still like for me to come on board. I can elaborate on some important issues. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your, for your submission. Priority, over to you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys and appreciate uh, Steven and Iwachik for the amazing space here. I just want to talk about um, something based on the topic here. Please, um, the, I think the, when I look at the whole situation, there are three umbrellas we must remove from Africa and we must remove from Nigeria, which is uh, the British, America, and France. They are the real problem of Africa. You see, when I was looking at the extent at which we have gotten, and also predicting the future, because Tinubu is desperate to be a president, and also because he wants to cover all his, his shits, He's ready to sell out anything in Nigeria. So someone like him, if tomorrow America comes and say we must, we have to legalize uh, LGBTQ law and the gays and all those things into our system, he will gladly do it because he wants to retain himself as a president. So it is very important that we carry the message of, uh, of the, the all eyes on the judiciary so that the, the judiciary will do the, the right thing by removing him from seat because they are just going to be using him to exploit. He's ready. He is ready. He's just ready for them. So my point here is this. The message must be carried out. We must also give credence to... Uh, uh, sensitization. If we can find ways to sensitize the Niger people, because what I see, I'm seeing that the Niger people they've already planted their weapons, their their uh, explosive. They've already planted them. They are already on standby. I think that the only people who are not ready for this, we Nigerians are not ready because we don't have what it takes right now. You see when. When this uh, Burkina Faso coup took place, there was this threat in Ghana that was going on. The president of Ghana was afraid that the same thing might happen in Ghana. But somehow they were able to control the system and it, it didn't happen. So, but now with what is going on, Nigerians, we must fight. The, 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 the internal battle is what we need first. Let us make sure everyone is aware Everyone is risen up. Everyone is fighting. Everyone is, is up and doing in the system. Because we must not allow Tinubu. If not, what is already happening in Nigeria especially? For me, I think that the internal battle is much more uh, strong that we need to handle. There's a stronger battle we need to handle. Then if that is done, the next thing we should do is that we cut off access to the West into our mineral resources in Africa. We have to come up with a, 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 a different uh, approach in terms of dealing with the mineral resources in Africa. These are the things we must do. When we do all these things, we will have back our country. We will have back when I think the Mr. Is it G, the one from South Africa who spoke when he was making analysis that uh, 
what is wrong with building train system where someone can easily come all the way from South Africa to Nigeria to go and watch a match in Lagos or Abuja and then from there go to Niger and all those. This is what is supposed to be. It's going to be beautiful. But now the West, France, they are they are they are already afraid that they are going to be caught. And the ones standing out as a result of the mineral resources. So if we, we come up with things, we are going to stop all this mess. We are going to build Africa, make when I met a certain old man in Ghana here. He told me in those days it was better to go to Nigeria than to go to America. And that was what it was. Because Nigeria was even a better place. You, if you travel to Nigeria, you make more money than then. But, but the question is, what suddenly happened? And now there are elements in Nigeria that they're selling out. So fathers of the same, some of us here in the country. But we have to learn to tell ourselves first the truth. We tell ourselves the truth. We first deal with our Can, I've rounded up, but the, the thing I want to say, I, I really appreciate the, the space here and, and what is going on and the sensitization, the awareness we are creating. I just want to say that we should keep it up and, and, and see how. Can, can stop the illegitimate president. We are going to get to the to the to the to deal with this matter and there will be no war in Africa. Because I do not see that if let's say it wasn't Tinubu was the Echo Watch Hello. Oh right, well, are you there? I think we're having a Yes I'm here. I'm here. Hey. I don't know he keeps breaking and coming back. Yeah know. let's kind of uh, uh, purity, we are losing you, but I think you should uh, kind of wrap, wrap it up so we'll go to the next uh, speaker here. There's a next breaking and coming back, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. I just wanted to say that let's create awareness and also let's fight the battle internally by by the judiciary doing the right thing so we can we can remove the illegitimate president so that we can stop all this from happening. Yeah, God bless us. Thank you very much, everyone. Please, I'm, I'm done. I've rounded up. All right. Thank you very much, Purity, for your submission. Um, let's quickly take a cue. We have people requesting the mic. I don't know. Arsuma, you've been here for like a very long time. You have the mic, please. Yeah, it's me. Thank you for inviting me. And I was listening for a few minutes and I truly appreciate it. I grew up the Francophonic area a country called Djibouti. What I was listening, nobody knows the history of East Africa. All Africans here, do you hear me? They more understand the West Africa less to East Africa. Uh, I think we should, growing up, I never heard, I didn't need a little bit Senegal people because it's from France. Africa need to get rid of it first. The Francophony and the common way. That's a true number one enemy for Africa. Before you get rid of America, this Commonwealth thing and this Francophonie thing is already brainwashed. We don't belong to any club. We belong to Africa each other. I'm, a, I'm pan African and I love my Africa. Africa is not a country, it's a continent, and I love my continent. The other thing is this problem, Niger, who is a French speaking country, the worst affected as African is the way the French is speaking. African are the most suffering people in Africa. And Africa, growing up, it become Africa is a, is a battlefield for any country who looking some resources, some propaganda, something. We become like a toy. You give a child a McDonald's toy, 
and all Africa will become like a toy. And all that because of the education. We concentrated so much. Nobody is proud to say I come from University of Nigeria. I come from University of South Africa, University of this. We're all proud to say, oh, I study in English University, British education, American education. We are not proud to who we are. Even our music is coming back to listen again in the world, but it's like culturally, we are destroyed continent. Nobody understands the continent have one culture. We don't have one culture, but technically we have similar style of music. Even nobody understands that. Nobody understands. And we keep repeating all this. Ethiopia has not been colonized. But what we understand as an African, I grew up is around Ethiopia. It's my neighbor. And I have a lot of neighbors because you reach really African, East African country. Ethiopia has not been colonized, but Ethiopia has colonized each other. Ethiopia has a different feel, the way I understand the history of Africa. Ethiopia has different understanding of the world. Ethiopia is a close nest, like close from the world. Uh, their leader didn't allow them to understand their own country. The reason now they're fighting and those proxy war happening in East Africa, especially in Ethiopia, um, Somalia, and Somaliland, because I'm originated heritage-wise the Somaliland, that's why our uh, Osom is a Somaliland and stand for, is the people are so tired, they're so confused. I understand more French culture than on my own African culture because my education was French. I understand all the lake, all the night, where the visiting, where not to visit, where not to go. I understand all that, but I didn't know anything about the Kenya who was just three hours, two hours away by plane from my corner. All that is education. We lost education. We don't have native language to collectively. We don't have anything. If anybody tell me what's the local language of this country, Africa, I won't understand it. And now the most suffering country in Africa is Cote d'Ivoire. Nobody report the crime happening there. And all this propaganda, the BBC or French Red Cap or whatever, T5 or whatever they call the, those resources the Africans rely on. Uh, I call it, if you want to listen to something live, you have to listen to BBC. If you want to listen to something live, you have to listen to French news. I don't have a clue anything German, honestly. I don't have anything German. But if those two languages I speak and understand the culture, both are not favoring to Africa. Every country, they have their own tradition, they have their own country. If you come to UK, they have their own royal family who they treat them like, like God. And we don't even respect our, we don't know anything about Africa. And we have all the resources, all the beauty, all the beautiful things. Do you ever think anybody, now I can see like well, somebody advertising them or cost of Ghana because they love the American go there. I can I don't have a clue if I want to visit those places, how to visit, where to stay, where to buy the ticket. I know where to buy the ticket. There's an international buying ticket, but I want to know where to go and how to go this place, how to research this place, because it's nothing available. We are lacking the, all the resources we could make from the country. We don't have it. And the reason all these people are dying in the sea, because the people... They're not protected by the government. They're not protected by the people who are the Asparo. They're not telling them what is there, what is not there. There is nothing. We are, we are the, I, th I think we are the lost society. We work hard everywhere we go. We participate in the army. We take part of World War I, World War II, who is nothing to do with us technically, but we take part all this. But we don't take part of our own war. We don't take part of our own problem. We don't protect our own resources. If you go to Middle East, they have petrol. Nigeria has petrol. I don't see, I don't I see a few glamour things, but I don't see the whole country rising together. You can see Saudi Arabia is a large population. They have petrol. Their people are living in a comfortable way. But Africa, whatever resource they have, they don't live in a comfortable way. I can't carry on. It makes me cry even to think about it. 
and I'm holding the rice in my hand and everywhere. I can't see it in the picture. And Africa, we need to think differently. We need to change our way of talking. We need to change our way of processing things. We need to understand our own idea. Africa, if you go to East Africa, the whole East Africa now is in war. Sudan, Somalia, Somalia, King Somalia. They are genocide as Somalia. There was no one African country who say that genocide should not happen. There is no one African country who even raised a voice. There is none who say that place has a happy genocide. It's like Rwanda. Nobody ever talk about it. Nobody even raised that voice. And when that voice is not raised, it's like meaning we don't care each other. To one member of my family, we genocide the people who speak the same language as me. And it hurt my soul even saying that. We should be embracing each other. And those governments we put on top of the ladder and saying, you are the head of the state of those African countries, they, don't, they carry all soup and they carry on every meeting of African Union who happen in, Af- in Ethiopia. They don't have any clue. I don't know what they talk about. It. If they're not even raising the genocide happening, when it happened, the genocide in Germany, it's still, I learned at school, but I never learned what genocide happened in Rwanda. There's no child learning in Africa. There's no child learning the genocide happened in my own country, Somaliland, no Somalia. Nobody. We don't learn anything. If you don't learn your history of the, around you, you will never learn your own history after that. How are I still learning World War II? Other men will learn. And there are something terrible happened that time. But we should, I, I don't agree. We should not talk about it. The genocide happened in Germany, what they did, Hitler did to other people. We still we need to do our own problem and deal our own people and respect our own people who cry around you. Now I leave to that. And thank you for giving me the microphone. Thank you very, very much for your submission. We need to rise as Africans. This is a time for us to unite, like collectively stand our ground. Enough of the shenanigans from the West. We are not going to keep tolerating them. They've extorted us for too long. It's time for us to put them in their place. Africa is too blessed to be poor. We are too blessed to be poor and we don't have any business being poor. It's just that these people have always found their way to always loot and take our mineral resources for peanuts. Now we are rising. Everybody is awake. Every I think every African country is awake now and realizing that it's time to do away with these people for good and stand as one front and, uh, you know, NS our God giving mineral resources for our own self. Thank you for your submission. All right, so if you're on the speaker session and you would like to speak, please just um, raise up your hands and um, so that we can take a cue. So Obed, you have the mic, then Ocedion will go after Obed. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ayawachi. Thank you, Stephen, our incoming governor. Thank you, everyone here. I would like to keep it very, very short um, because I discovered that if I keep talking, I might get angry, honestly. I'll get angry and say what I don't want to say because, honestly, Nigeria matter. You don't pass, be careful. Um, Quickly to the point, uh, I just want to let us know that, just to remind us, I'm sure a lot of us know, that Tinubu gave in to the pressure of America and France at the expense of the life of over 200 million Nigerians. Tinubu knows very well that he's all his dirty past, where he kept his dirty past, that people like America knows very well. So America now use that same thing to push Tinubu to war with the ECOWAS so that they can protect his past. But this man called Tinubu doesn't know the kind of country America is. Of course, a lot of people like Africans, I want to go to America, I want to do this, I want to do this, forgetting that America is one of the most deadliest country on earth. They don't fish, they don't enter the river where there's no fish in it. They don't also trade where there's no game. You know, the same person that Tinubu is trying to let us believe he's doing the right thing by fighting, the ousted man actually is an outright puppet of America and France. This man had three oil wells already discovered recently. 
that have been hidden. He is the one that is in charge. He wanted to be the one that would take the sole ownership of these three oil wells. Each time the military, just a little bit of what is happening, and I will tell you what I feel we should do right now. Each time the military in Niger plan to fight against the, the, the bandits, this same man that was ousted, this man that Tinubu think he wants to go and reinstate, will be telling them, wait first, let us get a clearance from who? From French military. We are saying, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we are free from slavery, but indirectly, we are still, in fact, a lot of African countries are still well tied up in slavery. So, Tinubu did this because he wants this country to, but he never knew that these people are still going to use him and they will still open his book later when the time comes. So all I want to say right now, straight to the point is, this is no longer the time most of us sit down. Already people like Harawa and the rest of them, Stephen, they are doing their own bits by bringing all of us together through space. You know, like, um, what is his name? Saddam and the rest of them. This is not the time for us to sit back and press our phones. See, the evil man himself said that power is not, is not served on Alakato. How did he say it? Power is not given on a platter of gold. Nigerians will have to sit up. I wouldn't want, I, time will not permit me to go a little bit in, to delve into the kind of life that these people they call, um, this Russian magni, or I've forgotten their name, what they do, what they've done in over 14 countries. They are not friendly. What Nigerians do not know that if these people eventually they should make use of them, coupled with the Nigel, is going to affect Nigerians. It's no longer, let's allow them, they should start from the north. We are together. It's going to affect virtually all parts of Nigeria. So all I'm saying right now, if they are listening, even the Agbadorians, the Agbadorians who foolishly went and voted in the evil man, who might be listening to us, it will affect you if you're listening. Go and tell them that even your own family, it will affect your family the more. That we no longer need to sit behind our phones. Now we need to step out. We've been talking about it. I was on space yesterday. We've been talking about print if you have money, even if it's only 10,000 naira. We have all eyes on judiciary paper, uh, 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 you know, soft copy anyway. Go and print your own. Wake up in, in the middle of the night. Paste it anywhere you can paste it. Anywhere you know you can elaborate it. Just el talk about it. And if you can't come out, begin to, begin to share it. We can't sit back. We can't sit back now. We have to take the law. In fact, when I say take law into our hands, let's come out. This is the only country we have. Sitting behind our phones and pressing will not help anyone now. If it's only 10,000 naira, if it's only 5,000 naira, take it, go and print out the copies of all eyes on judiciary. Begin to paste it anywhere you are, wherever you are. These people are not ready to hand over power to us easily like that. It's not, so we need, to, we need to push, step out. Begin to post it anywhere. Begin to talk about it on your social media. Begin to talk about it. Just like what they do in violent space. Let's start doing it because these people, they are not... Tunubu, to be honest with you, people, Tunubu has a lot of, let me say, a greater percentage of judiciary in his pocket. This man, I told people, the very first day he released that word, Imiloko, this man had nothing to offer Nigeria. He has nothing to offer Nigeria. All he ever wanted to be is to be a, what I call it, a stupid president. He doesn't know anything. Up to now, we are all suffering. He does, does not have any plan. And I'm sure some people who are fools will be happy. They took some certain billions of dollars and now they're about to pump it into the NNPC, wherever. The money is going down the drain. Just wait. He had no plan. So my people, if you know your family, tell your family to tell your family. It's time we step out. If out of the 36 state, if like only 20 can step out in one particular day like this and begin to protest here and there, they will shake. What Tinubu, I, I'm going to be rounding up now. What Tinubu is doing right now is what a lion does when he sees humans because God has created us to rule over them. Either a lion or black snake. When they see you, they run first. If you're wise, when they are running, you run because they're about to turn back. Now, Tinubu and his evil men want us, they are going to ginger everybody. They want to make it to run. All right? Let's not do it. We should not run. We should turn around this time around. 
And if you run, they will chase you. They will continue to chase us. Don't run. Let's turn back at them now. They should come out and mass. Whenever there is a protest, there's space there to tell us where it's going to be. Locate where it's going to be in your own state. If you have the money to travel to where it will be, go there. Let's not sit back. They are not ready to hand it over. This man can do anything possible. Don't be shocked that that money that they just got now as a loan, part of it will go into trying to bribe judiciary. I don't trust the judiciary anywhere. I don't trust them. So please, as I read my mic, step out, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, those in diaspora, anywhere you can help us. Don't wait for anybody to give you money. If you have 5K, 10,000, print the, 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 or at the judiciary, place it anywhere. Don't wait for anybody. These people are not willing. They are not going down. Let's show them how it is done. Since they want to fuck around, let them fuck around and get the fucking results. I eat my mic. Yes, so fuck around and find out. Judiciary. Now do anyhow, now we'll call it with Uto. We are waiting. I just are angry. It's not going to business as usual. That's the truth. Very well. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, Someone just sent me... um. APC folks that always uh, sniff around on our spaces. Um, there's one garbage, um, one garbage, um, what do they call her? I don't know what she calls herself. But let me get into her reverse DM just to send it to her. But they went to make, um, of course, their propaganda video to intimidate us. What we are doing here is really getting to them. This all eyes on judiciary matter is getting to them. There's one uh, despicable... Um, um, APC stooge. Her name is Miss Sheyi Titi Lyo Falo Foshe. Going about um, her propaganda channel on it's called it Pondom Reporters. Of course, um, she put my picture, my profile picture on uh, on one of our fake news. I'm going to make a rejoinder on that. I'm just trying to say uh, one of the things they want to do is to bully us on the street, steal our mandate, um, frustrate people and also come online to gaslight and bully you. Do not let them succeed. Um, they're always sniffing around. She screen recorded our spaces and they edited and started making... You remember that stuff happened back in the February, um, just after the election? Yes, February. exactly, I remember. They are back at it. They are right back at it. And I'm sure <laughs> the, the despicable fool is right here on this page right now. While we're talking about how to salvage our sub-region, um, they're looking for propaganda to to ram through Escobar on Nigerians um, on Nigerians and uh, and support this illegal invasion that the Senate of Nigeria has rejected. Um, but in any case, they weren't really talking about um, the ECOWAS issue. I would I will share that with Ariwa shortly. I just wanted to let Nigerians know that you should not be intimidated. Nobody is more Nigerian than the other Nigerian, according to our sister Aisha Yusuf. We are all equal in our citizenship. Let um, the, unfortunately, the Agbados are included in this, so they don't have more voting rights or more say on the future of our country more than you and me, particularly those of us citizens of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Um, Ariwa, let's continue the conversation. All right, um, this thing is not new, they, they are used to doing that, they did it, I think, one time, so it's not new. All right, let's keep it going. We'll see, Dion, you have the mic. Okay. Who said, Dion? Yeah. Good day, my African brother and sister. Yeah. I actually got into this this platform from a from one of my Facebook, from one of my Twitter friends, and it was still this same T-shirt, these eyes on the judiciary. You understand? She posted... The the our 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 chick handle that she was the one giving out the t-shirt and I was like interested and luckily for me I found myself in this in this what is call it in this platform so I just want to let I just want to start from the main focus like before there's there's this saying that when you are in, when you find the problem. Before you find the solution, you must know the, the reason for the problem. It's in every, it's in, it's in every every field, physics, mass, every single field. Before you find the solution, you must know the problem, the source of the problem before you can find the solution. So Africa, 
as the world. Let's ask ourselves, what's the source of our problem? When did our problem start? Once every African starts asking this particular question, we would be able to answer the, we would be able to find a solution to it. And I believe our problem started when they created the word Africa, when the Europeans and the world power, after the World War II or so, they came together and realized that there's no need of we fighting. There's a film I watch, I've uh, forgotten the name. It's it's a new it's a recent film where they were killing each other. It's kind of like World War One, German and and who else? Is it German and France or so? Yeah, German and France. They were killing each other. And they, they were fighting for just a piece of land. Why? Because they've not discovered Africa. Like they've not discovered the resources in Africa. Then they came together and tell the the what the ones that let's say is it the ones that won the war came together apart from Russia, they all came together and told themselves that why are we fighting ourselves when we can go and fight Africa? If you if you realize since the creation of Africa, there have not been any single war in Europe apart from this this Russia and Ukraine war. They've not been because they are always trying to they are always trying to come together. They realize that the, uni, the United Europe is better together than a united Africa. They come together, they create issues in Africa for every even the war in Nigeria, the Biafra war, the, the war was everybody knows this truth. The war was orchestrated by the, the West. The West set the Igbos and the Hausa up together. This that's just it. Everybody even have I wasn't born there. But I knew I just I I didn't I didn't even do history. I'm a science student. I didn't do history, but I already know this. I have not even read about it. Just the movies I've watched about Biafra, and I know that this thing. What got about the Biafra? They said some Igbo soldier came and killed some outside soldier. Some outside soldier came and killed the Igbos. Everything was all orchestrated by the West. But we keep on fighting ourselves. You as an Igbo man, you look at the an Aosa man. This is my enemy. You as an Aosa man, look at an Igbo man. This is an enemy. You as a Yoruba man, look at uh, this other people. This is my enemy. This is the people doing all this. They are far away. They told us that we've got, get, gotten an independence. And I asked myself, why did they give us an independence? They realized that after the World War II, if they didn't give us an independence, there would be a big problem because they are they are what is called they are they are is it they are they are military capacity has depreciated a lot, and if they just the same thing with Af- South Africa, South Africa they gave South Africa the apartheid regime had to leave because they realized if they keep on staying in the in that particular position with time. The people would would grow stronger than the than the gov than the p- people in power, and there's no way they would be able to fight the people. That's the same reason why they gave in Africa independence, not because they love Africa or not because they feel Africa is is strong enough or not because our 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 heroes, our lower, uh, what is called his name, Inabdi Azikiwe and the rest, not because they were able to they they were intellectually convincing to the West to give us independence, or not because they had this sweet tune in their mouth to convince the West. The West knew they were on the losing side. So they gave Africa, they gave Africa independence, like they gave Nigeria independence because they knew they were going to lose. And let me go back to the creation of Africa. They they created Africa to fail. That's just the honest one. Every African man knows this. Look at Nigeria. Niger speak almost the same language with, with with the northern part of Nigeria, that's that's Sukoto, Kaduna, the those people speaking outside, they speak similar language with them. But when they were creating, wait, would you all tell me you don't know that the 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 Lord Lugard and the rest they knew that I, I said Lord Lugard, sorry, the the Western power they knew that the Niger, the Mali, the those people they. Cut the they were they they, they they divided us like cake, and British took the largest part because they were like the big brother. They were still in they were still having their military power a little bit. The France took this the second 
the Germans, they never took a lot because they were just defeated. And the Portuguese, they, were, they gave them, it, just, it was just like a compensation. Let us come to United. Let's come together and take into this. Let's come together and, and escort these natural resources. Because before they came into Africa, we were living all right. We were not invading ourselves. We're not like Asia, like countries like China or India, where it, it, there, there's an, an there's a emperor that will just wake up one morning because he has the, the military capacity. Okay, let's invade. If if Africa was like that, the whole of Nigeria would be speaking a particular language. Probably maybe the Oyo of Ife, the 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 Alafi of Oyo would have said, "My people, let's go and invade Benin." Or the Bini, the Oba of Bini would have said, "My people, let's go and invade Kongi State." But we were all contented because our landmass was enough. There was enough food. There was enough everything. We never needed the West. But when the West came, we had this this. They brought religion to us. They brought religion of love. They brought the religion of of caring. We thought that their religion of a truth was the true religion and we thought that okay with the way the religion sounded and everything we could cause these people we read their bible why we can't we just ask ourselves why can't they why did they change the this ajayi crowd is the ajayi crowd the guy that changed that converted the the bible from english to yoruba they converted the quran from from ink from Arabic to Hausa. They come out the Quran from... Yeah, sorry, they don't, they, sorry, I don't know about that because I'm not a Muslim. Up, I'm, I don't know about that. Let me not see what I don't no. really know. But the 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 Bible, they converted to... to Hello, Osei, you, yeah, can, you, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Please round up. Okay. Okay, what I'm, what I'm going to say right now is that I know there are a lot of Africans in this, in this, in this platform and we should... All come together. Don't look at your don't look at a Ghanaian as your 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 neighboring country. Look at him as a brother. Because if you are in Europe, they don't look at you as in Nigeria. The way if you are in Europe, they see Asia, they look at this one as an Asian. They look Chinese, this is as a Chinese man, which is look, this one is a Korean man, and this one is a Russian. But you as an African, no matter which country you come from, they don't just want to care. They ask, are you from Africa? Are you from Africa? They don't ask, are you from Nigeria? Okay, you're not from Nigeria. Okay, are you from Ghana? They don't ask that question. They just generalize us as an African. And when they, when I tell people about our politician taking our wealth to the Europe, those people are the most foolish set of people in this world. Because when the chiefs are down, those wealth you, you keep in Europe, there's no way they would prioritize you before their people because you have a wealth there. They will tell you you stole this wealth. Get out! If when the war happened in Ukraine, they took their the Ukrainian took their 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 their, their Ukrainian. All countries focus on each other. They left all Africa together. Left all Africa. They, they don't say okay, this is Ghana, this is Nigeria. Okay, let's go Ghana. Let's leave. They left. They treat all Africans the same way they treat every other Africa. So let's remove this mentality that we are not one. When Gaddafi brought that ideology of a one Africa nation, they knew it was a big threat to their existence. The day Africa wake up, that's the day the whole world will realize that this Africa is where the Garden of Eden really is. Thank you. And you all should have a wonderful day. Thank you, Osedion, for your contribution. Like I said, Africa awake. The time is now. We need to take back our country, Nigeria most especially, because um, we have a pending case. For me, it all lies on the judiciary. Like that, I don't know, for some reason, I'm that selfish. My country first, then we can now think of how to, you know, come together and liberate ourselves from these people from the West who only know how to steal and loot and call it partnership. You can't do partnership and make the other partner a slave. It's not. It's not done anywhere. All right. I I would like to. We just received um, a donation for T-shirts. We received um, the sum of fifty thousand naira. You go next, then um, DS, then Ochuko in that order. Mark Finn, you have the mic. 
Um, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you also for giving me the opportunity, you know, um, to speak again. Uh, obviously, I've been raising up my hand for you for a very long time, so I like I wanted to even like ah, are you are you APC or are you trying to display the tenable policy on this piece? But <laughs> finally, I'm given the opportunity once again. Um, I've listened to everyone. Some that's the there. worst. That's the worst set of people to compare me with. Because <laughs> no, because I was like, ah, I don't wait tired now. So I say waiting. Ah, I, I, I mean, my hands have been up. I remember one. Uh, I think an hour ago when um, the host, um, our president, uh, 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 gubernatorial candidate for a two state, um, like about to call my name, but you have to say, okay, Matthew, you have to wait for this guy to speak. So since then, I was like, ah. No, I mean, but you were you interrupted somebody while he was speaking. And we needed to, you know, that we needed to put the house in order. Like, if everybody is just on mute and speaking, this place will be disordered. Like, yeah, it's not like yeah. he called you to speak. You interjected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not okay, intentional. I, I didn't keep it. Like, if you noticed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um. I I've listened to everyone's submission here, which is absolutely great. You know, they say two heads are better than one. You know, you bring your own idea. I bring my own idea. I mean, nobody is useless in this life. I mean, even those who have, you know, who have decided to be useless. I mean, decide to move the other way around. You can actually see that it was not, um, 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 um so from the initial stage. So everybody have something positive to give. But depend on how you want to use, uh, if you are willingly to give it out, you understand? That's why we're having bad leaders. Uh, first of all, I think I have so many things to say, but I have to just be brief here. Um, first, um, the, uh, uh, this, uh, I thank God the way um, I, um, the judiciary is um, going about this thing, uh, all eyes on judiciary, those who are printed the flyers and stuff like that. You know, I usually tell my friend that it takes two to tango, right? Uh, uh, speaking, it's not only two now, it takes thousands. And the, the two who started it are uh, uh, the INEC chairman, uh, Yakubu, or Yakubu, or whatever they call him, and the so called um, uh, um, uh, illicit president. And, and so it take, I would say for me, it takes thousands to tango. But it takes uh, uh, millions to tear up the honest nest. So if you take two to tango, or if you take thousands to tango, you take millions to expose them as well. Um, so that is what we'll be doing next week. And, you know, everybody just have to be out. So let me join that we, we have eye on you. Um, to the issue about Niger, which I've said precedently, and stuff like that. I think someone was mentioning about uh, the BRICS and stuff like that. We should be careful. In fact, most the African countries, I mean, the, uh, um, the, the, the uh, um, sorry to say, the French-speaking country in Africa have to be very, very careful. They have to be meticulous, I'm telling you. Because it's like you are leaving your former slavery master, but not knowing that you are going into a new one. You know? Let me tell you something, which you don't know. I, I will not call myself an historian because I'm just someone who just goes into history once in a while and come outside. Like the um, just a science student as well, like the president. Uh, um, I think I just said now. Um, be careful. Russian liberated uh, the South African you are seeing today out of the apartheid stuff like that. They gave them weapon. You understand? They gave them weapon and they find their way out. Right now, we should not. The French speaking country should not see as an opportunity that oh, we will find a new master because that is what they are doing. A new master will giving you gun and. and Listen, there's a big difference between Russia and the West and the American stuff like that, which we don't really get. Russian have the resources. But they have all manner of resources. Quite all right, they will not be interested in you. There's a saying in my in my pleasure, they say that when uh when you have people that have their, their own money sufficient enough to take care of their of yourself, no one will be bothering you enough. Like no one will be interested in taking the one you have. So you understand? So when, when I have a source of money, you have a source of money, I mean, uh, it, 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 it will look uh, absurd or it will look um, um, uh, very thoughtful for me to start looking eye on you and stuff like that. So that's different between Russia and most of these Western countries. You understand? But there is a critical thing that we all have to 
expose or debunk here. Russia might not be interested in your resources. Don't get me wrong. They will, they will never be interested in your resources. But they are totalitarian. That is to say, they want you to remain under their command. Just like the way they've been bullying the Eastern Europe country within them. Name it Ukraine. The Ukrainians have been exposed. Um, the Georgia and the rest of their, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Poland was liberated a long time ago. Um, Bulgaria, Romania, these are countries they've been building. Armenia, Albania, right? They want to be bullying you. They want to be the boss. When they say, don't speak. When they speak, don't talk. Just obey and follow. A communism, a communist country. Those who are saying that, I don't know if there are any new members. We have only seven. They have, they have only seven British countries right now, Right? But those who are saying that more Africans are joining BRICS, you can just know, just know what you are joining. I don't like the West neither. I don't also like the so-called one coming to help. Let them help. I think Africans should know how to stand. I'm a businessman. I'm, I'm an Igbo guy. I'm, an, I'm a businessman. I'm a Nigerian force from the which of Nigeria. I'm an Igbo guy. Now, I do business. When I'm doing business with you, buy and go. If I need what I want to buy from you, I buy and go. Don't come and start directing me how to sell, what to sell, and where to sell. That is what they are doing with we Africans. That is just it. So we should know how to get from U.S. and and its West and the, uh, with, the, with the West and the uh, Allied and, and all the European and so-called other countries who are in the world developed, uh, Russia, Turkey. We should not to do business with them and say, okay, hey, this is trade by barter. This is business, right? Uh, my interest will be there, your interest will also be there. So, we are done with business, go. If I have business in America, okay, this America coming. We are done, you go. Nothing like, um, that is, I mean, we are, we are not getting this right. So, that's not, this information I want to pass to, to, the, to, the, to the Francophone countries. They should be very, very meticulous. Russia might not be after your resources because they have. Don't get me wrong. They have. They are not after resources. They have enough. They have abundant. They have gargantuan resources, right? But there is something you might not see. You might not see coming. That is just a simple truth. They are totalitarian. They are too. They are too commanding that you might not even have a say, or you might not even have, you have to interrupt. You understand? So you might be praising them, applauding them, but you forgetting that there are sort of abysmal part about, about about them. Same thing with the West. These are bears of the same feather. So my, my own idea or my own uh, 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 orientation is that we should just do business with these people and get away. We don't have any business. Just do business like the way most Asian countries do. Business, you go to your mama's house. Simple. You don't get anything close. They will never like you. Not today, not tomorrow, not 500 years to come. This is just starry. You understand? So, I mean, you should just get it straight in our head. I was able to do it. So that information I want to pass to this francophone country. I understand the Russians are trying to help. You know, that's why I say when when um when one is trying to I know see the greatest enmity are not even found in Africa, is within the Western country themselves. And you know, the Russian and all the white countries, you understand? All the Caucasian countries. Because see, they, they, they always have disagreements, you understand? But it's not exposing them. You understand? So the, I was telling someone that if Africa will change, there will be misunderstanding, disagreement between those those ones who have who have take, uh, taken that they will take control of Africa for the, the eternity. Then when this one disagree, this one disagree, then we will not start knowing how to escape our, our ourselves. You understand? So that is just it. That is just it. And the other aspect of um, uh, Niger is going to have said that before. If Niger are going to suffer, see, African are blessed with resources. See, the most, uh, uh, the most, I think, uh, I read a book and say, and sincerely speaking, that is the truth. Uh, women are the first resources on earth. Human, that is, we, we, you, you, me, our ideas of how to create things. Even if there is no natural resources, we are the first resources on earth. That is bestowed by God. We are the first resources on earth. So, uh, if you, you see a nation growing, you will see the population. You understand? You see a nation growing, you see how you see the number of population. 
you see number of genius of people coming from this from this from this from this nation you know so but how to impart this knowledge you understand so human is the first capital of development then the natural resources are there so if it, someone tell me that Niger are going to of course oh, come on you know, getting free from your master, you have to strategize, settle down, have a room, you know, know how to organize yourself, you know, you, know, you, know. you are getting free from those hazard uh, uh, ways of life, time, you understand? But are they going to be balanced if they have the right movement? Yes, if they have the right, this cool of a team, if, if the cool leader, are, uh, uh, their agenda or their aim of the cool is to, is to, is to revive, uh, 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 rejuvenate their country, from this disastrous act of the French colony. You understand? So that will take them far. You understand? But if it's the opposite, then <laughs> just like from frying pan to fire. You understand? So, but if you're on the right track, I bet you sincerely speaking, see, it won't take one month, two months for Nigeria to be balanced. I bet you sincerely speaking, it won't take one month or two months for Nigeria to be balanced. You understand? Because they have all the resources. They have they they, they 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 don't need to get the brain from Europe. I hear someone saying you have to get no. I'm in that same Europe. I've been in many countries in same Europe. Oh, see, if I've never traveled, eh, that's why it's good to travel. Even though I mean, not to travel to like I mean, express one or two things. You understand? If I've never been, I would say, oh, seriously, these people are just feeding us with lies. You understand? They themselves depend on some other countries to survive, like. Most of the infrastructure going on in Europe, especially in the Eastern Europe, have been done by Chinese. Have been done by other continental countries. Most of the telecom companies I've seen, most of the countries I've gone, have been owned by the, the Brazilian and the South, South American countries. Folks, I'm telling you the gospel truth. I'm not lying. That is a fact. You understand? You see, if you just remove some certain country from Europe, the Europe is dead. And those countries are German. And maybe if you go to the Scandinavian countries, those with resources, right? Europe is just dead. It's just dead as nothing. That is a simple truth. And uh, for the fact for one saying about currency, no, you can have a one-unit currency, but that doesn't mean your economy is strong or stuff like that. And as an even the euro itself, not everyone uses the uh, the and, and, and the euro. Not everyone uses the euro. You understand? So what I'm saying is that Africans should learn to make decisions based on their own standard, not based on trying to please anybody. You understand? This, your, your, the so-called illegal president we have right now is trying to please the French people. You understand? It's just like the, the British are going away and the French people are coming. You understand? Because all this movement of him going to France, you understand? they know that. See, it's like an agreement. Guy, if you don't work with me, I will expose you, you know? Oh, my expose, yeah, you'll expose you sharp, sharp. If you talk any, uh, you don't finish. So he, he's just playing the game. He's playing the game. That's what I see. He's playing the game because all this nonsense is going to France to go and he say, have malaria, you have thyroid, you have neck throat, all these things. I don't know the one treating him. I don't know the one covering those things. Now, <laughs> the, 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 the problem is ahead and they tell him, hey, Mr. Man, this is it. So you have to play your own part here too because we are covering up for you or if not, we just expose you. You understand? So they know, they actually know that they set up this man, they also supported this man to be the president so they can play their games, they can push their game. But I tell you, they will all be exposed. You understand? They will all be exposed very soon. You understand? I mean, these are these are these are there are so many trenches around that we don't even know. You understand? So we just have to be very careful and know how to work and know what to do. Let me quickly round up before that, so that people can speak. What I will say is that I mean. <laughs> this invasion of Niger, it will be extremely impossible. Forget all those things. Nigeria now will use mouth fight where we I swear. We are not military equipped. Our our military weapon are, are will I say in in vice uh, 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 weapon, like a weapon 20 years ago. You understand? I mean, we, with the military personnel, the result, I, I, I don't just know. Just like telling, waking a military man, say, wake up one day, wear a military uniform, go and fight. Just, it's a suicide mission. So all those things they are parading. Let me tell you the simple truth. Eh? Even the, within the echo was, you will see that even though they say, okay, let's send soldiers to go to the jail and, you know, do the dirty job. I tell you, some country will withdraw. Ghana is not far from me. They will withdraw. Because, 
China just said that they're working on something that here. They have no border. This is a borderless country. Then they show all these things. Oh, you know the Ismail they talk, pa 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 pa. What's wrong? Borderless country. You don't go take two minutes for Burkina Faso to just enter Ghana and wipe the entire village in that place. They know what they are doing, so Ghana will not risk um, uh, the so-called uh, elite, uh, 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 illicit president, uh, this uh, 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 order. Say, oh yeah, let's follow him as Muguna. No, the country are being careful. They are careful. You understand? So those one gingering, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then then go withdraw last last. And then go tell more. We are not going. Go on your own. Go and fight in Niger. Go go on your own and fight in Niger. So I mean, mm, I know it's time, Michael. Let's not speak. Thank you very much, um, Mark Finn. Thank you. Um, we, we as Nigerians, it's um, paramount that we see what is right in front of us because um, with the way things are going, a whole lot of people will be left with no option than to hit the street to make their words, their 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 their, their displeasure known. We saw like what is coming in the coming days. It's 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 just it gets it's getting more obvious every day, you know. With the release of the names, the kind of names I saw in that minister's list is even scary already because it's it's more of like putting the cookie jar in the hands of um, thieves that would rather would, that would um, continue to you know wreck the nation and um, already we. We have too many on our plates already. We saw how we are about to be gagged, but um, unfortunately, they didn't get to us. They tried gagging us, you know, ensuring that everything that we do, effort, something as minute as a billboard. I don't know for some reason why that billboard was a pain in the ass that they had to pull it down. It hasn't said anything or out of the ordinary. It's just a simple all eyes on the judiciary and it's becoming a thing that is choking, a thing that everybody is is becoming a threat. That's just that sentence is becoming a threat. That billboards have to be pulled down in a de democratic um, era where people have freedom of speech and expression. It's just unfortunate. So we we have a lot on our plate as Nigerians and as Africans as a whole because um, we, 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 we can see how we are about to be pushed into a war that we have no business going into. Going into a war with people that we have lived peacefully with. People that can even be called Nigerians. You know? People that have accommodated our own. People that even vote in our country. So a whole lot... A whole lot and um it's time for africa to rise up against these people if not they'll keep you know pushing us into abject poverty even when we have everything it takes you know to be greater than we are now with the kind of banditry and kidnappings we have been faced with as a, as a nation one would think it's something that um just happens but it's getting clearer by the day. They are all calculated crimes. You know, calculated crimes that, that is aimed at further impoverishing the poor. Calculated crime that is aimed at mining our natural resources. Natural resources that ordinarily is supposed to be our collective, you know, resources. Natural resources by is owned by every Nigerian. Look at everywhere you see that they're trying to either cause chaos or problems. There's something in that area that they're taking that you don't know. The recent one now is Niger State. Although Niger State, it has been there. It's just that for some reason, it will just, it's not as prominent as, you know, the core not. But with what just happened recently, that goes to tell us what is coming. These people are ready to do all it takes. And I can tell you that there is no way somebody will get into your house comfortably and even steal from you comfortably or even do something comfortably in your house if it's not somebody that knows the house. There is no way these people will come 
and operate smoothly without without a counter action when they come obviously one way or the other the owner of that or the 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 the, the, the keeper of that place has a hand in that these people come they do all they have they, like gone down over 30 military men and we have a governor who is saying oh we don't want them to go that video i'm still very livid at that video because that is the most insensitive video i've seen and it keeps coming that's the funny thing it keeps coming it keeps happening we saw what happened in zamfara only for us to find out that they are mining illegally there nigeria is too blessed we're too we're too blessed beyond reasonable doubt to be poor we have no goddamn business being poor so it's time for us to rise against these miscreants who have held us captive for decades and have made it mandatory to put over close to 2 million people in abject poverty. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Um, I think I've forgotten the, the queue I took. Okay, I think DS is supposed to go next, then Ochoko. Yeah, DS, over to you. Uh, all right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, wherever you are. Um, so far, so good. I've been following up with the, all the conversations since I joined the space about two hours ago. And it's, it's you know, it's quite... It, it makes me happy, although I'm at work, but I couldn't miss out on any engagement because it makes me happy to know that Africans are, are rising and this knowledge is being passed around so quickly be, be, without wasting any of our time. I would like to touch on some, some really, really key issues. And as the topic, we'll start with Niger. We, we, I, I want to talk about we as Nigerians, we as Africans, the crisis in Niger, and we'll start with the crisis in Niger. Well, first and foremost, I, I am not really a supporter of a military coup because although I am a supporter of a revolution, but I also believe that the people should have been able to do that for themselves. And that's where Africans have, you know, been getting this wrong. How about the military room? The military regime just becomes another puppet for another person. I am anti-France. I know what the West has done in Africa, both America, France, and the likes. And I know that Russia is here fighting for its own interest, you know, joining to fight against the West also, because the West is, you know, like a parallel enemy to them. And I, 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 I think the people should be able to stand for themselves and fight against this. And also, now um, I, I, I've heard people talk about Russia being, Russia also, like the, the last speaker talking about how we should be careful with Russia. I totally agree. But um, yes, there, there's something called the lesser evil. I'm not saying we should jump at the lesser evil, but I'm also saying that Russia doesn't really have track record of the kind of crimes that the West has committed in Africa and the other parts of the world. Although we know that it is interest, it's not because they love us so much, but then I believe that there's something called global politics and African leaders should be smart to be able to key into it. So as Russia comes in, Russia is fighting against, you know, the West, which is their parallel enemy, and if we can, you know, observe the global trend and turn it to your own advantage, know how to play the, glob the global politics also, align with who is the enemy of your enemy, who can be your temporal friend. I don't know if you are getting what, if everybody is understanding what I'm trying to say. It's not a bad deal. So I think that the alignment with Russia so far is not the best, but you know, keen into the global practice now and the global political game, it's something that, you know, can yield something good if we know how to play our cards right as Africans. And I also think that we should be weary about the West. We should be weary about France, 
America, Britain especially, because given what they have done to us as Africans, what they've done and the same game, these guys really don't change. They just play the same game in different ways. They have continually used it from the time of colonialism. They came with what is called the divide and conquer. And up till now, that is the strategy they've been using and they still use against us as Africans. Imagine these guys having their own, you know, having their own disputes wherever they are. And Africa now is the fighting, is the fighting ground. You can see ECOWAS, you can see a, a, another block of, of African countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger now teaming up. And you see another block of not even Africans. In the space of West Africa, you can see Africans not even agreeing. One trying to match on the other. And look at it, we're, we're like pawns in this game. So I, 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 I am so happy that we are having this conversation and the knowledge is being passed out for us to understand who the common enemy is. And also, I would also like to talk about ourselves as Africans, ourselves as Africans, our esteem as Africans. We should know who our forefathers were. The, the, there is this illusion or there's this, you know, brainwashing from history that the whites came here, they came, they gave us education, probably we were just here in Africa playing, jumping trees, not knowing what to do, and the white man came and, you know, saved us from um, barbarism and gave us civilization. No, a couple of times I hear Africans say, exalt the white man, especially in Nigeria, we have this saying, ah, some people will say, ah, Oibo, after God is Oibo, these people just have sense. These people just know how to build things. Look at the things Oibo are doing. But if, and that's where we've lost it when it comes to history, because we do not know what our fathers were. We don't even know that our fathers, our forefathers, before the coming of the white men were kings. We had engineers building boats. We had builders building houses, building infrastructure, and that was the civilization of that time. I, I, I employ a couple of us to go read books like How Europe Underdeveloped Africa and the likes. Africa had its own system. We had traders. In fact, poverty, we got bad and even worse after the encounter we had with the white man. Hello, sir. We were Can doing round very... Up, round up, round up. So move it along. Um, round up in the next 30 seconds. Oh, oh, all right, I'm with you. But um, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to, to let us know as Africans who we are, who our forefathers were, and the only problem we have now is a lack of system. If we can get a system right, we can unite and see ourselves as brothers and, you know, push our leaders to do the right thing. I believe we will grow as Africans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for... Um your patience, you've been uh, with us here for a while. I uh, really appreciate your perspective. I, I just saw my my brother Karanja up here. Karanja, this is Stephen. Uh, we we follow each other on my personal account, and um, I you are one of the big voices on uh, Pan Africanism. I, I saw something on your name, sanctions kill, and that struck a, a chord. Uh, let me quickly state that whilst we're talking about ECOWAS. Uh, assembling troops to invade Niger. There is also the question of sanctions that is biting. And uh, my brother Karanja has his attached to his name here, that sanctions kill. So we can say ECOWAS has started the violence already by way of sanctions. I'm sure Karanja will speak to that, but let me bring Ikebuya up. He's been trying to speak for a while. Ike, I know we, uh, um, he dropped up before. What's on your mind before I go to Karanja? Um, nice, you've, um, thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Yes, I've been trying to talk for a while. Yeah, let me start like this. I think the biggest coup the military in Niger did is not just overthrowing the civilian or the civilian government. There is convincing everybody that that they overthrew the government because they want to, you know, drive away the West. You know, it's it's a narrative that has been used over and over again by military regimes that take over to gain sympathy because they know that this draws at the heart strings of we Africans. So we've seen many iterations of this. A military ruler who wants to take over government, takes over a civilian government, 
then says, oh, everyone is corrupt and we're doing it because we're the, the other government is dealing with the West. We've seen this so many times and they end up being worse than they. Does that mean a should go and invade the country? No, absolutely not. That is not what I'm advocating. But do we want a Western, a Western region, a region, stop thumping down Karanja. I said no, that the ECOWA shouldn't do that. So understand what I'm saying before I start thumping down, please. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So does that mean ECOWA is going to attack the country? No, I don't. I, seriously, that is not, that is not the work of ECOWA and that is not the work of Nigeria. Do we want, do we want a region that is unstable with military regimes running around. No, we don't want that either. So we have to look for a common ground to see what the solutions are. Secondly, I've been listening for the past how many hours, and a lot of times all I hear is, they did this, they, they, they. The West control us, the West control our education, the West control our minds, the West control, we can't eat because of the West told us where we can't eat. We can't get light because the West don't want us to get light. The West controls our governments, come on. We put these people so much on the pedestal that it's like we can't think for ourselves. It's like they're so superior to us in their thinking that we can't think for ourselves. That is wrong. I mean, I don't know why we keep make saying this all the time. You know, and I hear this, I'm sorry to say, but I hear this from a lot of African Americans. They just think, you know, everything is manipulated. Like we Africans are like, we're like, uh, we're like FIFA 23 and Americans are the ones or the West are the ones playing PlayStation and we're just game, that they just move us around like pawns. You know, at some point in time, we have to look at ourselves and say, okay, take responsibility. Are, are the British evil? Yes, they are. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Are the French evil? Yes, they are. Are Americans evil? Yes, they are. But so are Russians. So are Chinese. And so are Africans. If we want to tell the truth, you know, it's all about self-interest for everyone. We have to look out for ourselves. So how do we look out for ourselves? So why do we do, why is it that we get such a bad deal at every time? You know, if you look at the East Africans, look at the people from Zanzibar and Tanzania who have dealt with Arabs, they complain of the deal that they had. So at any point in time, whoever it is that we Africans have dealt with, we have always had a raw deal. We need to ask ourselves, we need to step back and say, why do we always have a bad deal with people? You know, we have, we've dealt with the West, we have a bad deal. If we deal with the Russians, we're going to have a bad deal. I mean, somebody, I heard somebody just talk about and saying, Russians don't need our natural resources. Yes, they don't. <laughs> they don't need because we're competition to them. That is the fact. Every natural resource that we have, Russia has it. And we are competitors. We are direct competitors with the Russians. They don't want you to, they won't want you to develop up to an extent because the buyers would rather, you know, they would rather the people still keep buying from Russia than buy from us. So Russia, you know, when people talk about the Nigeria to Algeria gas pipeline, that America has an interest in it. Yes, America has an interest. Do the British have an interest? Yes, they do. Do the French have an interest? Yes, they do. Because it's an alternative source of gas, you know, for them. But who has the most to lose from that guy's gas pipeline? It is Russia. Because if that gas pipeline goes and supplies gas to Europe, they'll stop buying Russian gas. We are competitors. We are not, you know, they're not our friends. They are our direct competitors. Everything we produce, Russia produces it and they compete with us. Russia was one of the biggest, or Soviet Union at the time, was one of the biggest suppliers of, or producers of steel. And we gave Ajokuta steel rolling mill to the Soviets till today, 40 years or 50 years after. Ajokuta steel rolling mill that Russia has built for us never worked. It never worked. We've never had a good deal with these guys because they compete with us. The Russians don't want us to sell these products. They come with all this friendship. And the thing with us is that we are so wrapped up in the fact that we have suffered in the hands of the West and that we're ready to be friends with everybody. We don't need to be friends with anyone. We need to be able to trade with everyone. That is what we need in Africa. Why? What is stopping us from trading correctly? What is stopping us from trading correctly that we haven't developed ourselves enough. And that is a fact. The thing is, we have these natural resources. Natural resources, it's not wealth. It is not. It is just a resource. The real wealth is in what that natural resource produces. We have to get that very clear. You say you have all the natural resources in the world. You can have all the natural resources in the world and be a poor country. 
if you don't use the natural resource to do everything, anything. You know, people say, you know, that these people should come and build their... Why should a company, why should France come and build a uranium factory, a, a, a factory in your country? Why? You have the natural resources. You can build it yourself. You know, if they come and build it, it's, it's a cost to them. They will still exploit you because it's their own. We have to learn how to build our own. These resources are our own. You know, somebody was, I heard somebody talk about, you know, why is there no, no uh, railway from between here and Monrovia? Who is going to build it? What's stopping us from building it? Why don't you build yours to your not border? The next person builds it from the border to the border and we build it. But we, you know, we blame everybody else for the things that we could have done by ourselves. You know, look at Nigeria. Just look at Nigeria. Nigeria has oil. Somebody said Nigeria has sweet crude, the one that you can't refine, that you don't need to refine that much. But Nigeria can't even refine what we have. We don't have it. We can't produce. Whose fault is it that Nigeria doesn't have? It's not the West's fault that refineries are not working. We know that. We are Nigerians. We know the reasons why our refineries are not working. You can't blame the West for that. If we have sweet crude, if people who don't have natural resources can use those natural resources, why can't we who own it make the best out of it? So it is questions that we need to ask ourselves. Why are we not getting these things right? Okay. Yes. As we begin the round up, I want to just kind of chime in and challenge some things, so like a back and forth a little bit before Karanja will come up. Uh, first off, my my sense is your conversation is that we should look inwards. We should not trust the uh, new friends, the Russians that are coming up with this whole backing the uh, the countries that are toppling their governments. And um, you talked about, you even went to Ajakuta still. But I heard from Kunle, one of our friends here, which you might know, who talked about the fact that uh, Ajakuta still was supposed to be in, on nature. In fact, still school is there. I don't know if you can help me verify. You are from, suspect you are from Anambra State now. That because of politics, they took it to the middle of nowhere. Where the iron ore is and where the school is. So some of some of the things that is all wrong with Ajakuta may not be entirely blamed that Russia don't want it to work. It's more like a half truth. But I don't know whether you want to speak to that before I kind of ask a further question. Have you heard about no, that? No, no, I mean, a lot of things that we say is conjecture. You know, you can blame anybody for anything. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, the problem is Ajakuta was built by the Russians and it never worked. But, but politics true. made our people locate it where it cannot walk to. That's the no, argument. It, 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 it is not a matter of location. It is not a matter of location. It is located close to where the mineral resource is. That is what you do. You don't want to be transporting it. You don't want to be transporting iron to another place to do. The iron, the iron ore is there. So that's the natural place for it to be. So the location is not a problem. I, I think uh, if you want to, if, for, for the longest, the Western world, French, US have taken a bashing, at least on this space. So it's interesting to see you kind of balancing it out that these guys' alternative are not free either. You mentioned the part that we are all, as human beings, have interests. But my challenge is the fact that Russia did not colonize Africa. There are many Francophone countries that today are extremely poor. We talk about uh, Niger Republic, 80% are in darkness, yet they have uranium that powers the lights in France. So it's hard to point to Russia as a boogeyman when they've really not done anything to us besides, um, yes, they are competitors, but they, again, they're not the one controlling the, why uh, Pobia is still in Cameroon after 40 years. Uh, while um, uh, Bolatino Boots today is sitting in Aso Rock, is it just Africans doing that? Is there no external Western in, in influence? Uh, what's making ECOWAS go ahead to now fight Africans? What happened in uh, Burkina Faso, Mali? Why is Niger more important now to restore democracy? Why didn't you do it in Burkina Faso? So some questions are there. I want you to kind of push back on that before I go to Karanja. I mean, we can only have the question, have, have, ask the question is, why, 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 why is there more force used in one country or the other? I mean, Niger is strategic for a lot of things, for, for a lot of reasons. The day is, is one of the biggest countries in in Africa. It's a buffer between, you know, South, South, the Sub-Saharan Africa and places like Libya. So it's strategic. 
There's uranium, yes. Uranium is an important product. But how important? Let's let's even talk about uranium. Let's talk about this uranium self. Nigeria is not even the biggest producer of uranium in Africa. Namibia is. Namibia is not complaining as much as Nigeria is. Nigeria produces five percent, no, five percent of the uranium in the world. That's what you, that's what Nigeria produces. Fran Niger is not France's biggest supplier of uranium. Niger is the third biggest supplier of uranium to France. You know, if you look at the uranium industry, why is Niger having so much problem with the uranium industry? Look at all the biggest uranium producers. Look at Kazakhstan. Look at Canada. Look at Australia. All these countries, the uranium, the uranium companies that mine these products are indigenous companies. The only ones that are mined, the ones in Africa are the ones that foreign companies mine those screens. Why? So we need to ask ourselves, why do other people have these natural resources and they can pull, their, pull it out of the ground by their own country, by their own companies? Why can't we pull it out of our own companies? Let's go to petroleum. Look at the biggest petroleum companies in the world. Look at Saudi Arabia has petroleum. Aramco is one of the biggest in the world. Look at Brazil. Brazil has petroleum and Petrobras is one of the biggest petroleum companies. But when it comes to Nigeria, we've got petroleum, then we've got NNPC. For 60 years, we've had this petroleum, this crude oil, but we don't have a, a, a petroleum company that can challenge any of the foreign companies. Why, the, why I, even Malaysia? Malaysia has the Malaysian company that is challenging the local, they are challenging the shells and the chevrons of this world. So why do we have why is it that we can't challenge any of these things? So, you know, we can laugh at these things, but sometimes we need to be introspective. You know, these West guys are not good. Nobody's going to argue with you. We've had a raw deal with these guys for the opt-in time. But the problem is we need to look at ourselves and say, how do we move from having this kind of relationship that we have with the West and the East? And how do we become more self-sufficient? So it's, you know, it's not by always wailing and saying, oh, everyone is being bad to us. No, how do we be introspective? Let us look at what are the solutions for us. Thank you, uh, Ike. I, I, your argument is, I've heard it, and I, I think you make the case that we need to look inwards. We are also not free. Um, but again, um, I wouldn't dare to hog the mic, but I, I, I want to bring Karanja in. Karanja, thank you for organizing the rally for... Uh, Peace in West Africa. I, I wanted to give us an update what has happened. I, did that hold? And um, I did make a tweet about it when I saw that. And also your reaction to what you've heard so far. Thank you so much. Uh, we, I'm actually headed to another rally. So we, uh, we are organizing another one in Washington, D.C. And I actually just arrived here. So I'll be there. You, uh, it will get very noisy in a minute. Um, but I'll be able to submit. Um, it's so interesting listening to Ike. He uh, goes uh, on and on in a tirade, uh, 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 re repeating Western uh, soliloquies and, and, and narratives that really uh, leave us with absolutely, he, he offered no solution whatsoever. All he said was, let's just keep the status quo as is. And it, it's so amazing because we get gaslit with this very reasonable sounding uh, Western narratives that, that just say, oh, all human beings are bad. Everybody bad, everybody bad. Uh, black people bad, white people bad, Russians bad, Americans bad. So let's just leave the status quo and let's just leave France continuing to uh, colonize. The, the Brits, the Americans continuing to colonize. It offers zero solution. He, he says military governments are bad, civilian governments are bad, but uh, no one is good. So let's just leave the status quo. In fact, the military regimes are saying enough is enough with the theft. He just finished saying we need to introspect. We need to come out with a solution. Well, the military in Niger is coming up with a solution. They are saying France out. The Russians have never colonized Africa, but somehow he's decided that because all people are bad, we, we, should, not, we should not let the Russians in. But because all people are bad, let's just keep uh, Chevron and Shell owning all of Nigeria's oil. Nigeria, the reason Saudi Aramco is different 
and and is big and rich is because uh, the Saudis own Saudi Aramco. His statements are completely lacking in analysis, in historical analysis. The reality is that there's no way we can develop when at the turn of independence, governors before the, the independence was handed, was handed to African presidents, the governors of the queen, all of them signed treaties that forbade us, for example, in Kenya, from processing coffee, from processing tea. The people who were handed that independence, they've been trying to work within these treaties. They've been trying to be good. They've been trying to honor quote unquote, so-called international treaties, because we were lied to. These people, they gaslit us before handing independence to us. They created the IMF. They created the World Bank. All of these things were done in the 1940s. Remember this. Uh, the, the United Nations, all institutions that were built while we were still under colonialism. Why do you think they were building these institutions? And then immediately after creating these institutions that are the police of the world, then they hand us, quote unquote, what they claimed was was independence. Our forefathers did a great job. They got us to where they got us, but they were lied to and they were trying to, to, to stick within international laws. But what we have come to find out is that it was all lies. Yes, these people are actually smarter than us at being evil. We, we, we Africans are just not that manipulative. We do not know how to do this crazy shit the way they do it. Yes, so I'll give them that. They're more nefarious. They are more evil. They, are, they, they, they have this ability to be more manipulative and exploitative. We joined a community of, of nations, an international community of nations, that we knew nothing about, that we did not understand because we ruled differently. We had councils of elders. We had direct democracy. We had people who were dealing with their community right inside the, the you know, at, at, the, at the village level who were dealing with matters directly. That is direct democracy, by the way, and that is the only time we've ever had democracy because after that, when we've been trying to do this uh, American thing with uh, West this um, Western, uh, you know, trying to do this Western systems of, of, of uh, government, we've never had democracy. The United States is not a democracy. It's never been. It was never intended to be. Uh, the, the Electoral College is not democratic, right? We know that the Senate is not democratic. It is purposely made not to be democratic. That is why you have two senators for California two senators for Montana. California has 37 million people. Montana has 500,000 people. And they have two senators each. Is that democracy? That is not representation. The Electoral College is not representation. That is why Trump could lose by 3 million votes and still become president. All of these things were done deliberately. So when you tell us that we need democracy, that military leadership bad automatically, just because that's what the West says. Meanwhile, what has the 60 plus years of democracy in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Kenya, in all of these places, have they delivered electricity for all of us? Have they delivered economic upliftment for all, all of us? Of course, we know the answers to that. They have not. Why? They were not meant to. Kenya, my country, where I come from, we have copy-pasted the American system so well. We are doing our elections even better than them. Have that, has that delivered uh, uh, economic development and freedom for our people? It has not. It was not meant to. In fact, what it, what it, what it has done and what it was meant to do, uh, which is what it, exactly what it's doing, is that it is now enslaving us even more. We have now become a full-on colony of the United of American companies. You know, our, our democracy is now beholden to American companies. Uh, our president can be ousted because of the money of American companies, because now that we have this quote unquote democracy, the highest bidder, whoever pays the piper is the one who gets the government. So whoever is able to finance the campaigns uh, is the one that gets to be in power. So we've been lied to. So th th if the military is representing the will of the people, then that is democracy. Democracy means representation. It does not mean a style of government where people wear suits or the uniform does not make a difference. Is Tinubu democratically elected? He was even, let's say, that he won fairly. He was voted by, for by 9 million Nigerians out of 220 million. Is that democracy? Is that the democracy we want? So no, we need to get rid of the colonizer today. So this is an actual solution. Unlike Ike's fake 
uh, arguments of, of, of everything is equivalent. This is the actual solution. We get rid of the colonizer first, and then after we get rid of the colonizer, we can figure out what kind of systems of actual representation of the people's will will be. So I just arrived at the French embassy, so uh, I'm actually going to go and um, stand up to the Thank colonizer you. and tell them to get the <laughs> F out of our continent. That's a, that's a solution. These false Thank equivalencies you. are nothing. It's just hot air. A lot of good English saying nothing. Karanja, uh, you know you and I, we go way back. Uh, I remember when you were um, attacking us, obedience, for not giving up on the election, that we are always complaining. And I told you, if democracy is going to work in Africa, if the people's voice do not count, we will not have peace. The problem is exactly what you've said. So I've succeeded in making you an obedient, Karanja. <laughs> anyway. I guess, you know... <laughs> Hey, you've got to admit when you know you you've got to go with the flow. When 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 people convince you and people bring you to your side, to their side because their arguments are, are better, you have to admit it. You have to accept it. You know, I still would challenge you obedience because right now, even if Peter Obi were to were to actually the judiciary were to uh, overturn the election, will you guys will will Obi? be the one that will challenge the status quo. And, yes. and I don't know yes. that he I, would. I want to I, I'm not convinced you. he would be. Karanja, I want to encourage you to tread carefully when he's called OBI in an obedient space. <laughs> Thank you so I much. I know, right? Give but, us feedback. But, 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 but if, Give us if, feedback if on what's happening in DC, please. Give if, us feedback. If, if, if Obi wouldn't, would you guys actually stand up to him? And that is the true democracy that we want. He that would. We are he not would. going to... We are not going to focus on individuals, but we are going to focus on ideology and policies. Yeah. That that right. that would be my deal. And and the, and the biggest beef I have with you, uh, obedience, is that y'all should have done more to bring your people out. Nine, twenty-seven million people. Oh, I told you, I want you, election. I want you, Karanja. You've got. <laughs> I, I can take on all of y'all. Oh bring my it on. God. Thank you, thank you. I don't want to go there. Thank you, you think I'm scared of my brothers and sisters? Come on now. <laughs> uh, it's all i appreciate you for what you do thank you for your voice and um showing up in dc is a lot um, um give us updates when you can um uh, move it along Steven. thank you so Steven. much yeah um anderson yes. has um under the structure has a break okay um are you back now under go ahead i see your guy catching yes up. they have yes. captured another vessel in river states uh -uh. that is stealing our oil <laughs> So, and one of the people that was interviewed said that this happens every four market days. I don't know if you people heard me. Every AK every market day. Four AK market day. So they have chosen to use our lovely and most respected AK market day as a day to steal. So this comes down to what I was saying earlier on this space. Who is signing these vessels up to get into our soil? Which oil companies are they liaising with? Who are the people who are loading this oil? If 300 staff were fired the last time a vessel was caught, this wouldn't have continued happening. How can this keep happening in this day where we have all eyes wide open? How can Nigeria be borrowing money from IMF, from World Bank, when their own God-given natural resources is being stolen every day? Somebody was talking here before and he was like, oh, we just want a corporation. We just want a corporation. What do you call a corporation? A corporation is where it favors both parties who are incorporated. And anything outside that is no longer a corporation. Can you tell me that as I am, I can come into American soil and steal their oil without them knowing? without them finding out? 
are people who think that if America or the Westerners, let me use the word, the Westerners, if they stop getting into our soil and getting our resources, they are going to suffer. You are joking. These people have their own natural resources. That the ones they are getting from us, they have it in their storage. Meanwhile, we, who are the owners of these pure resources, we don't have any storage. We don't have it. In fact, I am so angry. And I don't want anybody to we come here again to gaslight us. I don't want anybody here to come again and come and tell me how our problem is only the Westerners and that our people are not. If you come, I will break this protocol and I will give you a to -to. I healed my mic. Can anyone hear her? We can hear her. Um, thank you. Wow. Um, eyewitness report. Um, can you hear me? Hello? Can yes, you hear yes. Me? I'm hearing you. Hold on, hold on a second. I just no, want to please, please beg me, help me beg them. We don't want to hear that this vessel has been set ablaze. We want to know the name, the name of the company, how they got into that soil, and how much. They said 350,000 barrels already loaded. How, how, how do you kid me on this? I'm so pissed. Let, let, let me, kind of, um, under your pissed because you believe that our problem is us, right? Because we are the ones stealing the oil, right? No, I am pissed because it is our people that are giving rise to the problem we are having. Yes. Since we know that these people need our oil, why can't it be done in the right way? Sign the memorandum of understanding, sell it to them at the right price, remit the money into the coffers of Nigerian um federal accounts and use the money to better the life of the citizens. That's all I'm saying. If nobody gives them the right to come and sell this oil from the back end, then they wouldn't have any room for something to be happening at every four AK market days. In this age and era, it's a no-no for me. It's a no-no for me. Anyway, let me thank you for your very impassion, your, your, your energy the frustration with what is going on. I believe we are all right. Uh, well, maybe because I'm your host, I have to take a middle ground as much as I can. But sometimes, of course, you guys know where I stand. But, but, and I are not wrong. Neither is those who blame the external forces. Because, for example, Russia was uh, sanctioned by uh, oil. And today, if you carry a Russian oil, the West will trace you and say, who is, where are you going with that? Who buys this oil? So everybody, like there's an external part of this crime, there's an internal part, but again, the sub, those who bear the bronze are ordinary, in our case, Nigerians, and of course, by extension, Africans. I think we need a holistic solution. There's no one size fits all. One person is wrong, the other is right. But I wouldn't dare to hug the mic. I see my guy in the house, I'll rush. Ogaka. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Domo, Domo, I, I only came, I, I, came, I come in peace. Um, <laughs> okay, sir. I'm, I'm actually doing a long walk, but um, uh, when I had EK, um, EK's submission, I just had a few little things I wanted to um, to highlight. Um, yeah, Kogi has the highest reserve of iron ore, but there's mm -hmm. iron ore in Anambra. Um, and then it was the East Central State, which eventually, even still when it was Anambra, so you have the coal, the coke, that will blast the furnace to do the iron and things, bang in there. And the Metallurgical Institute was set up for this. It was in the development plan in the 60s. So uh, Motala Mohammed, just knee-jack, decided to move it to, to, um, to Kogi. And um, I don't think it's the fault of the Russians that it hasn't been, it hasn't been done. You know, just like uh, the metro line, Lagos metro line didn't work. It wasn't their fault. Now on the gas, LNG, I, I just happened to, that's my background, right? That's where I started off my working life. So I'm, I was intimately involved. Um, and if you, if you know me, you will know that I'm not the kind of guy that will go in and do my nine to five and go home. I want to know the overall thing. So LNG has been shipping the gas. So they ship it to Europe, even to Asia Pacific. So to everywhere, um, the pipeline will make it more conducive. 
and they've shipped everything they've produced and they were bringing the trend seven you know into line so i don't think that the market is so saturated that the russians see them as a threat that's that's what i will say on that but um, um to the question of that gentleman that was saying peter obi peter obi is the solution to nigeria's problem he is you know or at least you start doing things right he told you that this oil, people don't just take it and go. You have to get naval clearance. So it's coming. 2022, because of, um, you know, what we've been talking about, Russian sanctions and Ukraine and all that. Saudi Aramco, listen to this, made a profit of 161 billion USD the highest of any oil and gas company in the world. And if you look at Nigeria, they say NNPC remitted zero. That was what the CBN said uh, in that period of time. So I agree to an extent with DK on that, that our problems lies within us. And it's all this coalition of criminality all over Nigeria, both those looking for power structure, both those mining, um, mining solid minerals, both those doing all sorts of things, this oil and gas people like us, all those militants, they are the coalition that we are fighting against. They are the people that are vehemently opposed to Peter Gregory okay. becoming the president of Nigeria. Okay, okay. Here's my just quick take before you come and conclude here. When I was growing up, if somebody steals a television and come and drop it in your house, the police will arrest the thief, take me to where you kept it, they will arrest you for keeping the stolen goods. When you steal money and keep it in Switzerland Bank, are you going to exonerate the Swiss or the West that buys this oil and buys this stolen gold in Zamfara in Niger State? Yesterday, we had an expose from Niger State, Madaki, Arewa. Our gold is available in commercial quantity in Niger. I didn't know that. We hear of Niger as farmland. Who is buying the gold? Who is buying the oil? So I think we are, we are both... Everybody on this argument is right. We ourselves... Are part of the problem. So are the buyers in the high seas of this crude. Um, Oga Kaji kind of title. Yeah, so rounding up, um, there was a fine piece of work done by one guy. If I pull it up, I'll um, when I get to where I'm going, um, I will send it to you. And uh, Falano as well alluded to it, where they traced our oil that got into America. It's not what we see in our books. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, why do you think even um, um, Putin himself or the Chinese will all be having a bit of dollar dollar thing, you know, either in Panama or wherever, regardless of how much they hate the Americans? It's because there's rule of law. Look, the LNG we've just mentioned, during the construction phase, there was a bribery scandal. When it was traced down to America, some people went down for it. Halliburton scandal. Some people went down for it, but not on these parts. People cooperated with us to show us our oil that went into America. Um, Lloyd's, Lloyd's Register, I'm just trying to remember the, um, the name of the other group, that um, do ships, you know, they sound the vessel and give the quantity and quality measurement before the, um, the, the, the vessel is certified. They are somehow blacklisted within within the NNPC structure because they will declare what they see. So, if you come out to the Swiss, like these are bachelor loots that are being detected, if you come out with credible evidence to the West, to America, 99.9%, .9 I'm sure you will be guaranteed to find justice. But not so in Nigeria and not so in Russia. So that, that will be my counterbalance to that. But as for what those guys are doing in the cool belt, um, I'm 100% for it. I saw Sankara up close when I was growing up, and I knew his, his heart was in the right places. There's no way France will want people to be coming to put their money there and their sovereign wealth and everything is still tied to them as if uh, they, are, they are still a colony. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. And I also agree that democracy has to have meaning for a people. The people will have to define what it is. 
there are not just a few power bankers, and then the West will bless them, like Blinken is sending tweets to, uh, you know, to legitimize Tinubu and give him something to, 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 to greet them. Anyway, enough of my rant. I just thought I should, <laughs> I just thought I should chip in my toothpaste. Thank you. Have a good deliberation. Thank you. Um, let me, let's, I'll go to Chuku um, next, but, um, I just wanted to quickly say that I am disappointed in the U.S. government, uh, the Democrats particularly, because we did have high hopes during this rigging of elections. We had protests at the White House. Had we known those three protests, we went to spend our money in D.C. protesting at the White House. It was a waste of time because the Democrats have aligned themselves with Tinubu. They, they've sanctioned the rigging. For them, nothing to see here is only Niger that we need to install democracy. They know what happened in Nigeria. They had their embassies. They had their um, foreign observers. But they, they, you know, even Chimamanda's letter. Uh, Ogakaji, I know you, you, you had concluded, but remember Chimamanda's letter to Biden on the, um, was, was that paper? Atlantic or something? No, Which even I, his own, even his own U.S. U.S. mission in, the, in, in Nigeria. You can Google it and you'll see so, what that lady did. That, you know, that we were disappointed. It's even yeah. hypocrisy. It is. But what you have to understand is Joe Biden is a creature of the establishment. I told my friend that there will be a lot of wars if Biden is president. A, because his, his friends in the, that supply the defense industry, all those Eaton, all those companies you don't know, a lot of things will be trialed in the deserts of Niger if they eventually start. So That is my fear. What would not try yeah. in Ukraine? They will test it in Africa. Yeah. So, but if you look at what's going into Ukraine as well, the, the money they are mentioning are going into some people's businesses. So that is how that is how these things work. Even the the air of fire and all the madness in the in the north central, it had gone very high where Nigeria was blacklisted as a country of concern. Biden came and downgraded it. Not that the situation has improved. You know, so um, I'm not a fan of his, but we should um, find a way to keep looking after ourselves. I think we are the, the common man is the <laughs> how do they put it? The hope of the common man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We should find a way to look after ourselves. And I would argue that the uh, for lack of a better word, the cool belts are looking after themselves. I'm just asking Nigeria and ECOWAS to mind their business. Fix your country. Go and re restore democracy in Cameroon if you are looking for a place to restore democracy. Democracy where the cause Chris. Chuku Dima Ike Budu. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. What's the name? Oh, I'm coming. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, good afternoon. Seems you are not here in the morning uh, when uh, the other guy was co-hosting. Uh, it's good to have you back. How is it going there? I hope you are making progress. And we are ready to keep on working with you until you get the tickets. Well, um, are you, sure to people like, are you sure people like people like me that, talk, that will say the truth without being afraid? Are you sure Nigerians like that <laughs> as well? Go ahead. Well, 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 we have to keep on trying. We have to make sure that we get in there ticket and in the ballot and to you win the election because uh this is exactly what we need now because uh, we don't need uh, <laughs> we don't need people that we sugar coat things and people that will tell us lies and everything yeah <laughs> we really hope you get there because you are the two representative of what the Oviden movement is in this uh, particular election well any it is we are with you we continue to work with you well, to this topic, yeah, uh, lately I, I, I was, I've been listening in and uh, it has been very interesting. Uh, it's very, it has been very interesting. And on the issue of uh, the democracy and uh, what we should do. Well, for me, I think basically uh, most of the people who have spoken are very right, depending on the angle to look at it. But I still believe that uh, the West have been so has very have been very dishonest in dealing with countries, not just in protecting their interests, but is a is a way of showing that they are also very weak. And I don't think uh, 
it's, a, it's time to continue to align with them on anything. Uh, if you want to align with them, let us ask for equal strength and, it, and everything at the same table. It's not a case where they are lording up it over us. Yes, talking about the military junta, I will never be a fan of uh, the military taking over governments. Not because I hate them, or not because uh, the way they, uh, or not because of anything. But the truth of the matter is that the present military I see in Africa are not even representation of uh, what proper military should be. So the people who are supposed to be protecting their people, but all they do is to kill and and uh, bully their people. Those who will not be giving power. So and I don't want to think anything of. Okay, I think you may have you may had a you may have had a call. Uh, we lost you there. Are you still there? Okay, um, you come back and finish your thoughts. And uh, thank you so much. Let me move it along. Uh, um, I see um, Anze. Anze, my sister, they screen recorded your submission yesterday. One, um, what's the name? Of, Ari, what was the name of that? Uh, is it Pondo? Whatever. Um, started making false accusations about um, um, um. If I have my my profile picture on their on their propaganda, one podium podium reporters, one garbage uh, blog, stay titi layo falufu. Very ugly, uh, confused uh, Yoruba girl. <laughs> unruly, <laughs> unruly, unruly one at that. <laughs> you, I'll send that to you answer. But go ahead. Oh my goodness, you guys are so I, I saw what she did to Harry as well. The, the same thing she did to Harry. I, look, it just shows that they I have now sent out all their minions into different spaces to just be doing that. And it is so shameful that the means of your livelihood is to go and listen to people telling the truth and twisting stories, going back to twist the story and use it against them. And that is what APC is doing. And look at how young she is, because I did see her picture. I saw her picture and I thought, does that mean you don't have any future for yourself if you want to descend so low to be working with people that are driving Nigeria to the farthest end of the earth? It is so shameful that you cannot, you know, in, sit down and intelligently come up with a good idea. Rather, you are going to steal. Listen, tattle tale, like my children will tell me. You're tattle telling people's story and then going back to report to the wrong people. It's a shameful thing. I don't know when Nigeria will have sense. Now we have decided that the person to, to stand in front, the brand ambassador for NDLA, it is the person that is actually eating dried vegetable, smoking dried vegetable. Because that is what it is. That is what we've come to. But uh, I wanted to thank everybody for this space because oh my goodness i know sleep this night oh i know sleep the the things where they hear oh now only god go help nigeria only god but you see i still follow the mantra god will not do what we can do he don't give us hand he don't give us brain it's our time now to use it eh because these other countries where we they talk about if we not give them brain he give them hand, he give them leg, then use them. The ones we don't even reach us, we don't even get half of what we get. They are doing surplusly well because they stand up to their people. My question now is, the people that were voted on that Labour Party into the different seats of reps and House of Senate, what are they doing? This echo was that is coming in front of us. What are those people doing? Why are they not speaking out? Why are they not using the space that they have to champion the cause of the common man? Must we all be crazy? We sent them on an assignment. If you cannot do the job, get the heck out of that place. They have a job. They have a seat. They signed and they agreed to do the job well. What are we getting from them? Now we're coming to mineral. <laughs> Everybody now don't know say for them backyard. What mineral are they? Ah, are they rich? Are they rich? 
If we do not take it easy, the same mistake that happened with oil is going to happen to the mineral as well. A few years back, I heard one of my Ghanaian friends that said that they found out that Ghana had oil. But the people were against it of being excavated. Why? They said, take a look at Nigeria. Nigeria had oil. Where are they today? Which is so true. It is so true. And the people said that they didn't want it. But of course, the rest is history because we see what is, is gradually happening in Ghana. But whatever be the case, their CD is stronger than the Naira. And it's gaining more strength. It's getting more investors. Our own. The people where we get, then they come out instead, instead because of insecurity. So the problem for Nigeria plenty, how we won't take Satan. However, the beginning, as far as I'm concerned, is to fight back this illegal drug baron that is working on colors. Plus that's in white. When no Greek gets sense, when open mouth talk say you cannot, you cannot they, uh, make the government do what you can do for yourself. See the weary. See the mad woman. I am so ashamed that she's a woman. You have children. You carry children for nine months and you are spewing rubbish when you see what your husband is doing. Eh? And see all the criminals in the name of ministers that you have paraded around yourself. Look at my brother. I've been vexed. Go sleep yesterday. I wake up with vexed this morning. My husband said, what happened? I said, Nigeria Mata, it's it a tear person eye. In the tear person eye, one of you both look me now. That carry eye, take to come back. Say, if you know it's in the Bible, let not just come near me. It is very upsetting that we have to be discussing this in this time of life when others are discovering new antibiotics. People are making headway going to space, people are looking for how to cut off petrol and use new renewable energy. People are discovering things. We are discussing government and tiffin. Hmm? We are discussing how Akpabio is using how many billions to buy four cars that is going to divide himself into four places to drive them at the same time. We are discussing how colotic this criminal drug baron is that his head, he has not made himself a, 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 a minister. Mm -hmm. So he's doing a uh, presidential work. He never get power to sign paper for presidential work yet. He they go sign for 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 mineral and for oil and for other foreign things. It's it's pathetic. It's sad. It's painful. It's painful. If you have any iota of stake in Nigeria, you should be enraged. You should be enraged that as rich as we are, we are still in one spot. We take one step forward and we take 25 steps backward. Arewa Chik, my brother Stephen, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I mean, all the vents within my belly, even if I come out the belly now, you know, go in, I know, go fit talk and finish. But we move on. This echo thing that going, I have said my own. Any army man that puts on his uniform and boots and decides to go and fight against his brother, he deserves no pity. Because what can he do? He can take off his uniform and resign. He can do that. It's a choice. He can take off his uniform and say, I'm not doing this. There's no point in me going there. It's not getting me anywhere. Who will take care of my family? The people that have died before, what did you do for them? Already we have a bad stench amongst Africans. We won't come add this one on top. Huh. Please, everybody, have a good day. Have a good evening. Have a good night. I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Enze, for always coming with the fire and your passion. Um, if you are not enraged, something is clearly wrong. It should be. Uh, what is going on is... Is, is painful. Uh, the consequence of an intervention in Niger is catastrophic, which is why we've decided to focus and talk about it. Um, a lot of people are saying, oh, let's just do, uh, continue all eyes on judiciary. I agree. But beyond Nigeria, there's a larger issue. If our sub-region goes up in flame, 
that judiciary here, yeah, not be go be the list of our problems. Um, when someone revealed yesterday that there were two hundred thousand Nigerians displaced in IDP camps in Niger, I could not, for the life of me, understand how that same Nigeria want to go and invade that country that is housing two hundred thousand Nigerians. Meanwhile, the French, the Americans, and other European countries have evacuated their few people that they've been using to control the country. So, who is the fool? Anyway, let's keep the conversation on. Um, raise your hand if you like to speak. I saw a couple of hands before. What happened? I I think I only see eyewitness report now. Hi again. Um. Thank you for giving me the opportunity again to speak. Um, EK, um, uh, what EK was saying is, it's like, it, I don't know how to put it, but he was trying to uh, sort of uh, sugarcoat most of the things that he was saying, but he was not even coming with a solution. Um, uh, I want to ask this question. If EK know the... A country that the world known as not corrupt, whether he knows the country, I don't think he know the country. It's Switzerland. Switzerland is one of the cleanest country and known corruption and lying. But I can uh, connect uh, most of the stolen wealth in Africa. Most of the stolen wealth was housed in Switzerland. How come Switzerland is not corrupt, but it kept all of uh, the stolen wealth uh, from Africa in Switzerland, in most of their banks. I, I think Ike need to tell us something about that. And also Ike was talking about why are we not taking over our, or why are we negotiating wrong deals? I want for Ike to go through the WTO treaties that they have, how Africa were positioned in the WTO. Then he will know why is it that when we sign um, how they call it, concessions, mining concession and mineral concession, why are we not gaining anything at the end of the day? Because WTO is not in our favor. And also, uh, let me elaborate about the gas pipeline that runs from Nigeria and Niger all the way to uh, Europe. This was pre-planned when they, were, they wanted to invade Russia. Um, uh, Victoria Nolan planned this with the intention of destroying Russian natural gas because Europe and America was so enraged, was not happy why Russia is making all these billions and they are spending money on defending Europe as, as they say under NATO because they spend half of the military spending to defend Europe. And uh, Russia is making billions upon billions from uh, gas. So the intentionally destroy the gas pipeline, Nord Stream 1 and 2. So, to have the Nigerian pipeline running through Niger, while going through Niger, they have to connect some pipeline to steal oil along the way straight to Europe. It is clear. America is a crook. We all know that. Um, I want to stress on this issue of owning our own. Yes, um, in some sense, we have to own our own companies because the Saudi were successful and not only the Saudis, the, even the Russian, like Gazprom, uh, Saudi Aramco, these are successful companies owned by the state. You nationalize whatever you think is belong to you. Put it on the stock exchange and create job for your people. That is one way to, 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 to solve most of our problem here. And also, I want to speak on our leaders in Africa, especially those leaders that will feel they are in the interest of Africa. I want to name some. We have to be very, very careful with them. President Ruto of Kenya is something else. He speak this today, tomorrow he's somersaulted. We have to be careful with such people. The Kenyan president, I don't think is stable. He's trying to seek Kenyan interest, which is good. But when it comes to Africa, sometimes because of Kenya interest, he is willing to give in. And also, Paul Kagame was trained by the United States. It's not a secret. He was trained in the United States um, as a guerrilla fighter. He's a CIA agent. It's clear. It's not hiding. 
Paul Kagame don't attend the African-Russian summit since the Russian introduced it. Anything that have to do with Russia, he don't attend. But anything that have to do with America and the West is always present. So we have to be looking at these guys. They are very, very, very complex people. We need to be very mindful with them. And uh, also this guy, Alassane Ouattara, is a trouble for West Africa. He is the one that is pushing for ECOWAS to attack, for ECOBOG to attack Niger. Nigeria is just at the background. Tunubu is in panic. I'm telling you this. He's in panic. He's afraid because he's seen something that maybe there must be a military coup in Nigeria. I keep saying this. People will call me one day and tell me, oh, Kimabe, you have a foresight. Nigeria will experience another military coup. Tunubu is panicking right now. Alassane Ouattara is being pushed by the French. French have a huge in investment in uh, Ivory Coast and Gabon. So I, I saw um, the Gabonese were in Nigeria or Nigeria were in Gabon, but I couldn't go through it. If somebody might correct me, I don't have a problem. Uh, I'm willing to learn. Um, the Gabonese were having some meeting with Nigeria and because of the same fear. And there is possibility that there are dissidents in Gabon that are, that are in Nigeria that will definitely spring and destabilize Gabon. And Gabon is being one of France's main and Ivory Coast. Gabon and Ivory Coast have been France's main backers in whatever they're doing with, along with Cameroon. These are the three angles. Now, if they lose Ivory Coast, they lose Gabon, they lose Cameroon, these are strategic countries for them. It's going to be a chaos for us. So as the, uh, the fellow was saying earlier that we need to look after ourselves. Yes, we need to look after ourselves. But in this time, in this time, what are we doing as a people? What are we doing as a people to solidify the gains that we are getting today? He, EK is saying that the military regime is not uh, okay. Yes, that is his opinion. EK, you are fine. I know why you are sitting there. You are okay. But there are millions of people, including your fellow Nigerians that are in Niger, are in displaced camp. Nigerians are going to bed with no food. And you are having a, maybe a nice meal tonight. Remember, what goes around comes around. Uh, Liberia and Sierra were fighting civil war. We went to countries where some people look at us like we are not human. But today, they are facing some of these difficulties. They understand what is civil war. Um, what I want to advise here is the military takeover in this region is not orchestrated by the United Kingdom, the United States, or France. This is the people revolution. These are the people, they rise up to the occasion because they have seen, it's not that because uh, they always come, they say, oh, because we've been like this and the people have been stealing from us, the people have been taking this from us and, and this and that. So we're using this as a means to take over. So we want to put situation under control. No, this is different. This is a different trend all in all. I wish we'll have some good guys in the Nigerian military like a revolutionary-minded people that will come and transform Nigeria. Nigeria is bleeding so much. The looting that is taking place in Nigeria is so enormous that transforming other countries like Holland, Holland don't have anything, nothing. Europeans don't have a single natural resource. All the raw material is coming from Africa. Why are we not going to nationalize them in create job opportunity for our people, then they buy the raw material from our body. We'd rather take it from here and ship it to their countries, create more jobs for their people, pay them good, good salary, give them good allowance, put them good retirement allowance. Why we Africans are starving and dying out of diseases that they, they are self-inoculated in us, diseases that were never in Africa, that they inoculated through vaccines and other things, which the proof is there. This is, I'm not making up things. And I'm getting enraged. So uh, uh, please, 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 please. Um, guys, you can you can you can bring somebody on board. I'm sorry. I'm getting so emotional. It is um it's an emotional topic, uh, particularly when you go into uh, the state of affairs of things. I, I I would I would argue um I'm aware that the Netherlands have vast oil reserve and a gas reserve. Actually, they are exploring it. So in the UK, they have the North Sea uh, oil field. They do have some of these resources. 
Uh, it's just the fact that they cannot seem to um, stay with their resources, but to go to Africa and, and explore, exploit it, you, partnering with their stooges who do not represent us. Democracy in Africa is failing. Everybody can see that it's failing. It has not delivered the dividends that was promised. Um, so those who are doing uh, military coups are all revolting against the current status quo that has not improved the lives of the people. So I feel that we should find negotiated solutions instead of military intervention. That's why we're here. Thank you so much for your comments there. Um, I, you mentioned EK as he is here. So uh, um, just for fairness, I'd like EK to kind of respond to what you said. Wait, can I can I go next, please? Because I've been waiting for a bit now. Yes, you will. But I want EK to have the right to um, um, clarify or pu push back some, on some of the things he was mentioned in. Before you go, Ike, um, go ahead and react, and I'll go to Ali Saidu. Ike, Buya. Yeah, thanks. I, <laughs> I've heard my name called a few times because of uh, my submission. See, things, <clears throat> I don't like making submissions on emotions. You have to be, you know, pragmatic when you make submissions and look at these things from the purely pragmatic, even if economic point of view. <clears throat> There are a few things that that have been said, especially about the um, about the gas pipeline, the Nigeria Algeria gas pipeline is scheduled to be owned by Nigeria, Algeria, and Niger. Nigeria and Algeria are supposed to own ninety percent, and Niger owns ten percent. This gas pipeline was first initiated during the time of General Gowon in the 70s. You know, the MOU was signed about 20 years later. And the last one was signed about maybe five years ago. So when people start bringing up conspiracy theories about these things, these gas pipelines were being planned for years and years and years ago. And it was supposed to be, and it's supposed to be owned by the countries, the three countries that go through, the three main countries, which is Nigeria, Niger and Algeria. So please let's get the facts of these matters first. You know, this gas pipeline, it's we're not dashing people gas. It's gas that we are going to sell. You know, I think we really need to look at things purely from a, a trade perspective. Yeah. How does it help? It's going to help us because this gas is gas that we are we are flaring. We are the ones flaring this gas. So if we can get a market for this gas, we sell this gas from Nigeria, from the Niger Delta, pipe it all. We don't have, we can't use all the gas because we don't have winter. We don't need to heat up our homes. The only, need, the only things we need the gas for is cooking and electricity. The people that need gas are in Western Europe and Europe where it's cold. So for, for us to get this gas, we need to get it to the market. And we're going to make money from it. So that's that's good. So, so are you saying we have enough electricity that we we don't need no, gas? No, 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 listen, here? please don't jump into me. I said that what we need gas for is electricity and cooking. These are what we need the gas for. But people who need more of the gas, if the gas that we have, we can't we can't use enough of it. Even with the electricity, we have enough gas that we have excess gas. So we need to sell this gas to other people. We can't just keep the gas in our own. We have to sell this gas. This gas needs to be sold. But the thing is, when we are, when as Africans, we need to approach things straight from a business perspective. While sometimes, yes, we talk about WTO and all that. Why we sign bad deals is that we don't look at these deals when they come to us. All right, somebody comes to you and says, you have a natural resource, right? We can drill it for you. We can sell it for you and we pay you so much money. But what we don't tend to do is try to understand what we look at a lot of times when we're when we signing these business deals is we just look at, oh, I've got, you know, let me say I've got team and somebody's going to give me $300 million a year or $500 million a year for this team. And we sign the deal. What we don't try to understand is how, how does this deal break down, you know? Yes, these people are bringing their expertise. They are bringing their <laughs> They are financing these things. 
But we don't try to understand why are we signing such a bad deal. And when someone, somewhere down the line, when we understand the deal, we start saying we've been exploited. Yes, they exploited us because we fell Mugu from the beginning. We have to understand that everybody wants to make a buck. Everybody wants to make profit. And we, as ourselves, allow ourselves to fall into this trap time and time and time again. So at some point, we have to look at where is this fault? Why is India able to trade better? Why is India, we've got independence of that. Nobody, I don't think we are, were exploited as much as the India. Yeah, India did go through slavery, but they were exploited badly. Badly. That's, that's, they exploited, the British exploited badly. But today, India is able to trade with, with the Great Britain on an equal footing. Why can't Nigeria? You know, why can't Nigeria? Why can't we trade? You know, I think a lot of times we, we, we look for who to blame. Yes, they are to blame. But we have to blame as well. We have to look. That's why I keep saying, people say, what's the solution? What's the solution? Yes, you can say, you can come and bone face and say you, you, kick out, you kick out the West. Yes, you can kick out the West. You, it's your right. You can do that. But this, you have natural resources. Having natural resources is nothing if, you don't, if somebody doesn't buy it. It just sits in the ground. Who are the people that need these natural resources? Who are the buyers? At the end of the day, you have to sell these natural resources to the West. That is the fact. That is pure economics. They are the ones that will have to buy these natural resources, anyhow you look at it. You can have gas. Gas will sit in your thing, but it is the West that will buy this thing. You can have uranium. Uranium is the West that will buy this uranium. That is the fact. So what we need to do is not kicking everybody out and saying, oh, you're all evil. No. Bring them back to the table. Let us rene rene renegotiate this contract. This contract is not a money contract. It's something that can be renegotiated. We can renegotiate it. We can sit down on the round table and come up with our strengths. We can renegotiate these things. It's not, you know, some people think, some people would like the idea of, oh, these people are evil. Let's kick everybody out. Let's, if you kick them out, First, you don't have the expertise to get this to, to drill, to, to extract these minerals. We don't have the expertise. Anyhow we look at it, we don't have it. We don't have this expertise. No. Because if we had this expertise, we would have been the ones to bring out this uranium by ourselves and show the world. No. But people told us that you have uranium and they brought it out for us. So first of all, we don't have the expertise. Secondly, we don't have the market. We don't have the market for these things. You still need that same people, the West, to buy these things. So it's, it's, it's looking at things purely without emotions, purely from trade. Let us sit down and do business. That is how we should do it. I think sometimes we want business to be tied to charity, or we don't want this business to come with an emotional, you know, an emotive phase or a benevolent phase. These people we don't look at it that way. They look at it, they treat with you, they sit down with you and trade with you on a business level. If you, you know, if you are if you're not sharp enough to do business with them, they will eat you. So we need to skill up ourselves and be able to do business. And secondly, we need to be able to convert the intellectual the intellectual transfer, and that is where we lack the most. You know, we have all these resources, but we are quite happy to be just people that have natural resources. We need to be able to. If people are extracting resources from our ground, we need to be able to be learning what they are doing so that at some point in time, that knowledge is transferred to us and we can, we can kick them out easily. You can't kick them out where you don't know how to do the job. You know, you, you can't do that. So you have to learn how to transfer the knowledge from these people. That is the first thing. How do you transfer this knowledge? knowledge? You have to be, be able to bring up people with enough skills and how do you do that? It's increasing education. Education is the first thing that we need to improve. We need to improve ed education so that we can have enough people with enough skill and manpower to be, to be able to transfer this knowledge from the people who, are ex who we say are exploiting us so that we can be able to develop our own companies that can rival their own and we can be able to do... You know, the thing is, if you have a Shell or Chevron in Nigeria, but we have an indigenous company as well, which is a rival to Shell. At some point in time, if Shell do anyhow, tell them... And saying, no, we need to look at ourselves. We are primarily uh, responsible for ourselves. I think we need to look at the holistic thing. We need to use our resources to develop our countries. 
for us, we shouldn't be selling gas when we have no light. That's my argument. Um, Ali Seido, um, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And uh, sorry about my background noise. I'm going to try to make myself clear and I won't take so long. Look, Africa, African problems is African problems. Nobody is coming you and making problems for you. It's you who don't want to make change. God bless you, madam. God bless you. You want somebody to spoon feed you. Nobody's going to spoon feed you. Okay? It's the survival of the fittest. You need to have accountability. Please. You need to hold your people accountable. You need to start having anti-corruption. There's no point in running away from democracy and running to dictatorship, okay? Russia is not going to spoon feed you, my dear. And Russia will knock you down and teach your people to cut your head off, okay? And oppress you more than you are oppressed right now. Learn from us, Somalians. We've been there. We were with the Soviet, if you guys didn't know. We were the first democratic country in Africa in 1960. We elected a president in nine years' time. We had a coup. And our military had brought dictatorship and communism in Somalia. We have been knocked and head down for 22 years to the point we were queuing for food, okay? And we had no freedom whatsoever. Whatever was going on in East Europe was going on in Somalia. Whatever was going in Iraq was happening in Somalia. What was going on in Afghanistan was happening in Somalia. What was happening in Yemen, all of these countries, they had allies with East Russia, okay? And we never benefited from it. And guess what happened? Last Cold War, 1977, 80s. The Cold War that was happening in the West and East, that same thing that's happening in phase two now, we were involved. We were the ones who were used. We were put into fight with Ethiopia. Okay? Russians said that they said they're going to back us up. And when we went, and by the way, we just didn't want to go there by, by the fun of it. We wanted to get our land and people who the Ethiopians has taken from us. Same as the Kenyans. They are people and land from us. So we wanted to unite the Somalians. And guess what? They brought Cuban military to beat the hell out of us. That was Russia. <laughs> they, we were allies with them. And they beat us up when the Toba is allies with them. Yes. And you know what? When you do that, the West will never, ever come to you and support you because they don't like your ideology. Yeah, until they clean you up. And clear off the all the you know the Hijana, can you be on mute, please? Because I'm gonna be finishing in a minute, okay? Be in mute. I'm getting a feedback from you. So Nigerians, please and please, you had a coup nine times, ten times you had a coup. This Niger, this Niger coup is not the same as Nigerian coups. Because you always been with the democracy, okay? The West, you always had allies with the West. When did you go to East? It's total disaster because they fight over you. You become their proxy war. And Africa right now does not need proxy war. We do not want ECOWAS to go at war with Niger, okay? We don't want nobody's proxy war. We don't want a war in Nigeria. We don't want 200 plus million Africans in Nigeria to be, you know, running from their country. Africans cannot deal with that anymore. We had enough. So Niger needs to stop this shit, this stupid coup. We, we, we want democracy. Democracy is not a bad thing. Democracy is about accountability. It's about holding responsibilities, about individual rights. This is not a Western thing. It didn't come from West, okay? It's for everybody. In fact, the Bible, the Bible God-given law, this is God-given law. God has given us the right to choose, the right to have freedom, the right to make choices, the right to have justice, the right to have accountability and rule of law. If Nigerians don't have that, it's not the worst responsibility. It's Nigerian leadership. And you need to go back to your home and ask who's representing you and tell them you don't represent me. Nigerians to have an uprise to change leadership. It's not for you to say, oh, we're going to leave the West and go to the East. It's just not going to give you bread, my dear, okay? Learn from us. 
32 years. It took us 32 years. We have had terrorism. We had Al Shabaab. We had Kida Kida. No one is going to spoof video, my dear. Okay? We have resources too. We have gas. We have petroleum. We have everything. But we need leadership. Right now, we have the first time Somalia, the second time after 1960, 69, we had a coup that messed us up. Right now, we have a very democratic a president who is an educated, who is academic, who wants to change and who wants to take the Somalians to democracy, federalism, self-determination, rule of law, anti-corruption, fighting with al-Shabaab. He had a mission to himself to clean al-Shabaab up. We had the African Union for 15 years in our country. Al-Shabaab, they couldn't win over al-Shabaab. So it's us, we had to take responsibility ourselves. If change starts with you, nobody is going to make changes for you. 15 years African Union was in. Nigerians in Somalia, 15 years. To help us, they couldn't. So we had to take the responsibility to clean Al Shabaab because of now this current president we have. He's, he cleared the more than 200 kilometers of Somalia, 2,000, let me say, more than 2,000 kilometers, literally two states of Somalia, 80% has been cleared off. We have like 20% left. And he said he's going to clear that next six months. We have to be free of Ashallah, debt relief, democracy. We, and he, you know what he said? He said, we're not going to take, we're not going to take sides. We're not going to be a proxy war for nobody. Okay? So for the first time, we are not taking East, we are not taking West, we are working with everyone. We are working with China, we are working with Russia, we are working with America, we are working with everyone as peace. His, his, his policy is Somalia at peace and peace with the rest of the world. Nigeria needs that kind of model, okay? You don't need to be wishy-washy, oh, I'll ask you this. What is done nothing to you? It's you. You need to change. Change starts with you. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, change starts with you. Change starts with you. Thank you, uh, Saidu Ali, for your opinion uh, 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 on this matter. I, I think I bring up um, um, end bad uh, governance in Nigeria. Raise your hand if you like to speak. Kijani Kenyatta. Your mic is on mute. You want to mute and raise your hand. Hello. And back off. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Good evening. Can you hear me? Kijani, you want to mute your mic? Not your turn yet. And bad governance. Go ahead. Kijani, mute your mic. Good afternoon. I want to come in. I do the state prayer um, governor in Iowa. Good afternoon, everybody on the speaker session and everybody at, on, on the space. Um, from Lagos. Okay, so um, um, the reason why I can, can anybody hear me because my phone is locked. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. We can okay. all hear you. Go to your point. Okay, so um, um, the reason why I requested the mic was uh, when um, uh, Mister Ike said um, um, we uh, we need these people. We need. Well, see, I keep saying this thing. No man was was born to be an island of itself. No, no nation was was uh, created by God, by the divine, to be an island of itself. We all. As, as the way God created our skin colors to be different, our 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 skin, our hair, our our culture, our the, the way we are living and everything, that's the same way He has made us to survive with what we have, with what He has given us as a blessing, as a resources. We are not we. There's, if you do not have, then make a good negotiation to the ones that have. Then we can all live in peace. But no, that's not the case. Of course, you know, there are people that want to take everything without even negotiating with the people that own the resources. No, they do not want to do that. They want to have everything because they have nothing. So 
what am I saying in essence? Yes, we have the resources, we have the gold, we have the uranium, we have the lithium, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have everything, we can, we can, every, every resources we can, you can ever think of, we have it. But we need right negotiations. You can't just be coming to Africa and be picking our things, be keep picking them, and you are, you guys are living in affluence while we are living, we are living in abject poverty. It's not done anywhere. It's not done. Nobody's going to take that for, for a very long time. There will be a generation that will say no to that. So, you want to collect our resources, then make good negotiation. Let the money start coming to the country too. Not you come. Somebody came online, uh, came on this space a while ago and said that they've caught another vestue that came to steal again. Who are the people allowing this vestue to come in? Which, which, which country did they take off from? Who, uh, who, are, who are the people in Nigeria that have that that has that are in support and are doing this business this business together? That is making this 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 money and everything that is not going around. It's not only our problem. With the people that are coming to get these resources too, why are they not coming with good intentions? It's a question we are all asking. Why are they not having good intentions for Africans? Why are they coming to steal our things, steal our resources, and making their countries to be better? Why are the people that own these resources are dying in abject poverty? And Africans will keep going to the desert, the desert to, to want to go to Europe so that they want to go and change their, their, their life and status. Who is doing all these things to us? They should come to the table and come and negotiate. We can negotiate. I thank God that Mr. Ike said that. He, he said the word negotiate because this uh, this all um, is giving up. Uh, we do not have blah blah blah. We do not have this. We do not have that. We do not have the expertise. We do not have this. We can have the expertise if we are ready to do it. We can do it. If let them come and do, let them come and write. Let them come and do all the old things they are supposed to do here. They should not be stealing our things and going making their countries to be better. Someone mentioned also, our dear brother mentioned that um, Switzerland. It's not a corruption country. Hey, this Switzerland is not. A, this, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about what are the perspective and uh, the perspective about how how people see all these other countries. And they're not. There's no corruption in their country. Blah 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 blah. But they are coming to steal from Africa. All the old weight. Sorry, excuse me. All the old weight from Africa is being stored in their place. But they are not. They are not corrupt though. They are very clean people. But they are. They, but they are allowing these monies to come to them. They will store it in their economy. And make make two make millions billions from the from this old money, and they make the economy to be good. But they are not corrupt people; they are not corrupt at all. So the word is, if Niger decide to kick out these people, yes, we kick. You can kick them out first. After kicking out, then come to the table and come and negotiate. You can't be picking our things and be going like that. It's not possible. Then the, the people that owns it, they will not be living in abject poverty. No. This generation says no to that. I need my mic. Thank you. Very interesting. Very interesting conversation. Thank you so much. Um, where's the, the gentleman that was trying to speak earlier? Uh, he has dropped. He has dropped down. Um, yeah. Um, raise your hand if you like to speak. <coughs> so we can bring you up. Um, raise your hand if you're on the speaker section. And Andrea, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving me the platform to speak. Yeah. Well, a quick one. Like the other speaker was saying, the thing is, it still, it still boils down to what? Greed. Hello? Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. It still boils down to greed. Irrespective of it, any irrespective of anything you want to say about it. It still boils down to greed. Whereby, these are politicians, they know the right thing. They, they, they know the right thing to do, but they refuse to do the right thing. And that's demonic and barbaric of them. And these are the same politicians that have been circling it over the years. Before now, things were beautiful, were still fine. You could hear in the universities, you were being paid bursary. A lot of things. We're okay. 
all of a sudden, everything just went. You could compare how much the, the naira was stronger than the dollar. It still boils down to greed. You are giving... See, it's, I, I think you don't understand. Now, the world has got to a certain stage, which is um, it's digital, which technology has taken a lot of people into advancement. You have, you have countries you can make a alliance with. For crying out loud, there is, there is the North Koreans, there is the Japanese, there is the Russian, there is still the West. It, it now has to do with what the neg negotiations might end with you. And it has to be clear. It has to be, it has to be something that your country has to be accountable for. Something of national interest cannot be owned by one man. Like, I just imagine how Nigeria is stupid and barbaric to this extent. We all could see, like for instance, all these Chelsea fans, who could see that there was a guy called Roman Abramovich. He would have, he would have, he would have been finished if not because of backbone of Putin. You can't just own a national treasure and I said, just like you, you know what it takes. But yeah, you yeah, this one owns this oil. There are a lot of things that is completely country and you know the narrative. It, we keep wallowing in this same thing of. Uh, we go harder, keep suffering, and they have come to know this is our weak point. Any small thing, no, we can't keep going in such parts. If you know how deep this corruption is, you'll be like, God, you are suffering. You are suffering. Your government has to be accountable for things. That is what is bringing forth in such country like Niger. They're tired. Like yesterday, a video of one of their politicians about running away with cash. Some of our politicians in Nigeria now have buildings that they bury cash inside. You can see the level of demonic attitude. You can remember when there was a um, kind of change of, irrespective of um, MFLA fucked up, which I know, but it was still orchestrated by a president, a commander in chief. Let's use that word. Let's don't miss quotes. I can't believe that Nigeria saw a failed system, irrespective of how poverish we were for crying out loud. Do you know what? Do you know the annoying part is after some idiots well online, they'll still come and be begging people. Like, are you, are you who, who's the, we, the person even in which you are trying to tell us, we don't even know who his existence is. Like, in currently now, the English has changed. The narrative used to be, we have male, we have female. But currently now, we have what is, what is I, I identify as a pronoun. For crying out loud, you can see that person as identified as three sets of beings. That's a transgender. You don't even know if he has forgery. He has a Niger, some set of... Well, what are we? That's why... God, if you go to those other countries, these people go to all those other countries, they're like a normal human being. You could walk on the same street with... with if, funny enough, you could catch up with the prime minister still going to maybe their, their financial stock trade house or whatever. You catch... You see some Nigeria, well, many Nigerians are brought up. This, this is... You don't need to... This is where the taxpayers' monies are going. They are low. So, 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 we'll just stay. We'll adjust to the suffering. Fala was a messenger. Say suffering and smiling. Where are we all going to? And and some section of us who idolize these people. Because they have given those sec See, don't forget. There is a part, it's called a food chain. It's actually a food chain. So there's an order of a food chain. So now these food soldiers winning, winning, you, they, don't, they don't even see shishi. Maybe just come and do small doings for them. They just sell themselves off. But the main people have collect, has collected, collected generational wealth. We have to get it right in this country. It's not about war. It's not about conflict. We are supposed to be the one that is supposed to stand against this Western Let's tell ourselves the truth. Who is against national interest? It's not, it's not pleading to what you call each country has a national anthem and a pledge. Like you said, or like we always recite, 
I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest, to serve Nigeria with all my uh, might. Also, I can't. I, I say I can't even put it right now. I'm trying to recite the pledge. So you can you can imagine now how you so, irritated. So it is it, what's the problem with this? Uh, you can't recite the pledge. Is it the problem of France? Or Nigeria problem? <laughs> no, no, even that. Uh, as in, no, that's not the that's not the problem. No, oh my that, God! I'm just irritated. <laughs> Round up. I'm not irritated <laughs> right right now because it's, it's it's like when when sometimes when you think about this Nigeria problem, you the, you not just have headache, you have migraine, like blood flowing through your brains, blood clothes in your brain. Cause like how, how can we? How can people be idolizing demonic entities? Like, are, are we okay? You are going to be a puppet for France. Let's see, let me correct Nigeria. Um, you see, if, if if you go by our study, each state has nothing less than three to four mineral resources that is that can be my in commercial scale. I repeat, in commercial scale. I'm not talking of say you have, you just have, they use the word have. We're talking of in commercial scale. Now, if we have 36 states with um, Abuja 37 now, having minimum of all the states has three, you can imagine the wealth of resources. You think somebody who needs money or is hungry is anything. He not see where to can fight. He not run go market where he will see food, see things, or bank, or he will go to a desert. I, don't Nigerians think. I don't understand. You go to a desert, you go to Boni, you go to Sambisa Forest. Like, what? what, what like, are we not reasoning? That means there are things there that people have been drilling from us for long. We need to make ourselves accountable, our leaders accountable. If, if you know the power you hold as a Nigerian, you, you, you should stand as one voice. Say, no. We don't have, we want to come plunder it into war. Are you not saying that the war is going to be a, a, a proxy that Niger has how much of uranium that they are being commercial scale? Now you have forgotten how stupid you are that you have nine depots of uranium in commercial scale. You are going to plunge with a man who just has just round three up, brother. places. Round up. So please, Nigerians, please let's do what's right. Let's propagate the truth. Let's know what we are doing in this country. Thank you very much. I yield the mic. God bless you, Nigeria. Don't forget there are other Africans here as well. God bless Nigeria and... When God Africa bless all other African, African countries, yeah. Yeah, we're talking um, ECOWAS, Niger crisis. What, do we, what should we do? It's an open mic session. We'll be going on for a minute and a very, very... Interesting conversation. Uh, before I bring um, um, Margaret Jones up, a beautiful flower. I'd like to hear from you. Nice name. Hey, thanks. Um, great room, by the way. So I wanted to react to something that I heard about. Um, I think the person was trying to explain, um, you know, I guess they were trying to explain or make the excuse about, you know, Nigeria and maybe this, you know, wild assumption that we may have a military takeover. I hope not. I understand the sentiment that is sweeping, you know, Africa, this anti-French sentiment, we have to take over. You know, I get that. But there's something about this kind of optimism that I want us to be a bit cautious about. And the reason I say so is, the I think it was EK that said something about, you know, having resources is good, uh, being able to negotiate is good. But the problem that is facing African nation is we're very weak. <laughs> and so not just, you know, in terms of economic power, militarily, we are very, we're really very weak. So, the, and also that means that because we don't manufacture finished products, we don't have the capacity, for example, to manufacture finished product. We still have to. So most of our deals are extractive in nature. So you have resources, but you cannot, you know, use it or turn it into anything at the moment. So all you do is to sell it out, right, um, to nations that need it. And 
if you look at African nation, we, we all mirror each other. You know, it doesn't matter if you go west, east. Some nations are better than others. But ultimately, in terms of corruption, in terms of underdevelopment, um, we all mirror each other. And so you might say, do we have bad leaders? Or is there something else at play that is making, that is continuing to enable Africa to be weak? Looking the other way in terms of the fight for corruption. And also... Uh, the bad deals that we continue to sort of sign. So um, you would say, oh, we have all these resources. Yes. Also, and I don't want to be <laughs> like a pessimist, but uh, I guess in a way to bring some things home, then you have to sound that way. Listen, there's nowhere that military administrators govern well. What is going on right now? Right. Even if you look at the countries that have taken over, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, it's the same. This very same thing they were complaining about is what they were doing. And I've said it earlier. Suppression of freedoms, you know, even just gathering, even suspending political activities. It's what's going on. They can't even get it together to bring insurgency low. Back to the numbers that it was when they had help with military troops that he expelled, you know, in Burkina and in Mali. They are right now going through it in those countries, especially northern Mali, northern Burkina Faso. And it is not good for you to have, you know, um, militants running, literally trying to overrun your country. I know it's glamorous online, um, you know, to have this anti-French sentiment. It is fantastic, right? But at the same time, you have to understand what exactly is at play and what are we trying to, you know, uh, put in place in our country? Even though we're trying to make sure we get better deals, you know, we try to make sure we, we are respected even when we show up to these deals. We're trying to make sure we have good leaders. I'll tell you something. ECOWAS has been working on ECHO for a long time. This is one example how they sabotage us. The president in Côte d'Ivoire, the same day, that ECOWAS was having a meeting in 2019 to make sure, oh, we're going to start with the ECHO in 2020. Macron, and I think his name is Halasara, if I pronounce it wrong, please pardon me if I'm from the country, decided in April 2020 they were going to meet, and they, and they decided, oh, we're going to use the ECHO as well. And eight Francophone countries, they will adopt this ECHO as their currency. And then we're going to leave Nigeria out. Right. And so it was like, well, these are the very many. Why did I bring up this point? You already know that you as a member state, you already know what ECOWAS is planning to do to be strong and trade with each other easily and get better end of the deal. And here is one person who decided I'm going to go on the back end and sabotage this deal, bringing ECOWAS back. So it's like you, you move forward and then you have leaders that are, in, that are in bed with the West who continue to sabotage the efforts of Africa. And they do this all the time. Now, is it willingly or is it because of the deals that they already have with these countries? You could say that. The internal structure in ECOWAS as well, as well struggles sometimes. Remember, we have the Anglophone and the Francophone member countries. And interests clash even as they decide on how to move the region forward. And because of these many factors, it's very hard sometimes, even if they know the path to take. Some of these Francophone countries cannot willingly or independently make monetary policies because they are not independent. They are tied to France, to Bank de France. And most of the deals that they have is according to the Paris um, Stock Exchange. So you cannot come to bed with that kind of nation, with that kind of country to independently flex and make policy, even up to security, you see? So you have to always look at, hey, I know that it's sometimes, it's very complex, you know, this issue. But when we come, when we come to say, okay, so what do we do? I'll say, first of all, instability is not the best way to go. Because you're dissatisfied with an elected, um, with a, a democratically elected government, doesn't mean you should support a junta because it, it never ends. It really doesn't. Because then the next junta will come and another junta will come. And before you know it, you become a military state. So if corruption continues to thrive, to thrive 
right? And if our leaders are going into this contract, um, not really, you know, they don't go with the best of intentions. So it's both ways. You can say the West, they have their own sinister agenda. Yes. But what about us? You know, we play a role in having our own back and getting the best deal for ourselves. Currently, it's 80-20. We extract about 80 and we use about 20. As soon as Africa begins to develop, the balance will change because you will need those resources yourself. But what are we going to do in order for these countries not to even get to a point where they have peace to be able to say, okay, now we have to develop. You're not even thinking about developing when you have extremists at your backyard. That's all you'll be thinking about. And then trying to make deals in a rush. The IMF loans, the World Bank loans, um, the Chinese loan, none of them at this point, well, maybe the Chinese loan is a bit better, but none of them at this point is good for us, even up to food. And when we say we're not allowed, they're like, oh, what's holding us back? Well, the deals are holding us back. So you cannot, on one hand, say you want the best for Africa, and then you're supporting military junta. It doesn't bode well. The stats are not working right. They're not coming out the best way for us. I mean, look at Niger. Niger has everybody, almost everybody in that country in terms of military presence. They have a lot of bases. In a country that has over six U.S. outposts, seven African outposts, the French is there, Germany is there, EU is there, and then we have smaller special forces in that country. And yet they went through this kind of instability since July. You know, so it's not making sense. I feel like Africans, we need to, uh, you know, sort of wake up and realize that. I, and I like the fact that, you know, there's this new awakening with younger uh, population that they have. And also the ethnic baiting it's there. It's alive in all of this nation, especially in Niger, in Nigeria, in Burkina Faso, in Mali. They have this majority minority that is at play in their politics. That even if the best man for the job comes in, like Bazoum, Bazoum was doing the right thing in Niger. But then the minority majority um, um, sentiments came in. The elites were nervous and they needed to take him off. So sometimes internal politics, local politics, even local reforms are not even allowed to thrive. And it is Africans sometimes that are, you know, um, are the affairs of these things, rolling it back. So even in as much as, so I'm going to land here to say, in as much as, you know, we want this progress, we, ask, we have to just be cautious in the way that we're going about it. You don't want to make go from bad to worse, all because it looks, it looks good, it, it sounds good. You want the best for your country. You want Africans to be in charge of Africa one at a time, one step at a time. Thank you. Let's tie it together. I hope um, you, were, you were done. You want to take 30 seconds to tie it together? Or, or you made your point? Yes, uh, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. You, you made a lot of very, very valid points uh, that I agree with. Um, but uh, the one I would like to push back on is, so far I've heard these spaces on this Niger issue. I've had Nigerians come up here. Um, they don't think Bazoum is doing well. Um, as a matter of fact, when Bazoum is calling for help, he's writing the Washington Post. He's not writing the Nigerian press to let Nigerian help him. Nobody in Niger is interested in him, except the Washington Post and Paris. So if he's doing well and nobody in the country is rallying and protesting to say we want our wonderful Bazoom back, I, I fear, are you sure you're not um, glossing over the will of the people of Niger in your very, very valid point you've made? You, uh, my fear, I don't support military junta. I don't think most people here do. But what is clear is that we don't support the status quo either. Uh, I would argue for those that want to go into Niger to to restore democratic order. They should first go to Yaoundé and, um, and restore democratic order in Cameroon. ECOWAS need to look itself in the mirror. They are an embarrassment right now. There is no democracy in West Africa. Nigeria would be one of the beacons of a democracy because for the last 24 plus years, somehow we've had democratic um, transitions. But you and I, I don't know if you're Nigerian, I suspect you may be, you and I would know that Nigerians today are saying all eyes on the judiciary. 
because the majority of Nigerians voted and they were brutalized and that mandate was stolen in a very brazen fashion. So much so that they are touting it, do your worst kind of behavior. Yes, we stole your election, do your worst. If Nigeria, the superpower in quotes, parenthesis, cannot get a credible election, no single observer said that election was credible. Even the U.S. hypocritically made a report about what happened. Today they are backing. So if you back democratic coups, I don't understand the, the pushback on the military coups. They are all coups. None of them is good. But what is clear is that the Nigerians do not like the status quo. They want change. Yes, the military is not the best, but what was there was not sustainable. And when you say it's doing well, how do you allow all countries of the world to have military bases in your country? How many Nigerian bases are in the U.S.? How many Nigerian bases are in France? Why is every country putting a base in Nigeria? Have they solved the problem of the Sahel? Is it not the same NATO that brought down Libya, Gaddafi, that has led to the chaos all over, including the Boko Haram we're suffering? The West cannot extricate themselves. It is a big problem that we are facing. This invasion is the biggest mistake, and I hope they don't make it. But thank you for your point. I just wanted to push back on the fact that you mentioned the Bazoom guy doing well. At all. He's not doing well at all. Nobody in Niger has come up here to say they want him. They really reject him. And they're just saying he should leave. They don't want him killed, but they want him to leave. And the coup plotters have said, if Ikowas go ahead with force, he'll be the first to die. Yet, Ikowas seem to want to go ahead with that. Who are they protecting? What is going on? That's why we're here. Thank you so much. Uh, Russell Jones... Ogan Jones, thank you for your patience. I'm interested to hear your perspective here. Ogan, are two puppets that they play now. That's why now. That's the reason why you're asking why two puppets, Niger you... puppets and Nigerian puppets. It's Andrew. Lucian, are you Jones? I say Jones, is a talk. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead. But uh, I really enjoyed Beautiful Flowers' perspective. Um, I think there's something going on in Africa. We are waking up indeed. Even this discourse alone tells you we are no longer where we used to be. We're hoping we get to that place where we can actually be in charge of our destinies. Chin on so Charles. Oh my goodness. Chin on so long time. I see you. Please come up. And Maureen, I see you too. Um, okay, Jones, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I appreciate you, Steve. Uh, Arewa Chik and Anka Deda and the rest of the listeners. I appreciate being given an opportunity to speak. And the more I look at Africa as a continent, the more I see leadership is the biggest problem we have. Why do I say that? You see, a country is defined by the leaders they have. Let me move towards China. China was brought into world economy in the 60s by Nixon, an ex-president of America who was disgraced out of office, but he brought in China. And in about 50 to 60 years, China was brought in. Because of the kind of leadership, you might tell me they are dictatorial, they are whatever, they are socialists, whatever. But their leaders have carefully stolen technology from America. You know, in the 70s, we used to laugh when you say made in China, we'll start laughing. But today, nobody dares laugh at China when you say something is made in China because everybody's using Chinese products. How? They practically lured the West into bringing industries into China and quietly stole the technology or nationalized it or did one thing or the other. Today, they are imitating everything they can imitate from the West. In fact, they have been carefully coming to Wall Street in America to get capital to run their industries. China has done a wonderful job in 50 to 60 years. Today, they are an economic power. They are wrestling America to the ground. In fact, today, it's the war, the economic war is between America and China. Why? Leadership. Now in Africa, why don't we have such leadership? Okay, I will throw you again to the Arab world. Look at Dubai. They have oil like Nigeria, like a country like Nigeria. How quickly did they transform their country? In a matter of 30 years, they have transformed that nation. Why? Their leader. You see, in Africa, the problem with a lot of leaders are they are very corrupt. Okay, you have mineral resources. Wonderful. But you know the problem? When these Western countries come to negotiate, 
These African leaders take peanuts for themselves and sell out their country. When you look at the contracts they are signing, they are always making out their own percentage of what they, they move to Switzerland or Europe or America or wherever, and they sell out their country. When you keep selling out your country that way, do you think other nations will take you seriously? They are looking at you and say, okay, we can give this guy uh, 10 million and steal 1 billion from his country. He will not care because we have given him a bribe. We can blackmail him. He's in our pocket. There's nothing he can do anymore. And you know the worst part of it? These corrupt African leaders are too selfish to walk away. Okay, you have taken a bribe. You have compromised yourself. The West is now blackmailing you. Rather than walking away and letting another leader take over and explain to him, dude, look at my problem. I've been compromised. But can you go back and do something better? They will hold on to that power for as many years as they can, killing their own people, sitting on that bad deal. So how do we expect Africa to move forward when our leaders cannot see through what is going on? It is the poor leadership, the corruption going on, and by their selfishness, they are being made puppets for the West. Always, I can name most African countries. I can use Nigeria as a core example. Today, we have a so-called president in court. Of course, he's in court. Why? He is being manipulated by France and United States because they have the goose on him. Even if he had good ideas for Nigeria, he can never implement it. He will be a lap dog for United States and France. It's as simple as that. And look at it all over African countries. That's the same thing going on. Okay, look at Basra in, in Niger. Why would they have such, a, such deals with France? When over the years they could have gotten France to come and cite industries that process the uranium right there in Niger, what stops them from putting that in their negotiation? That's the kind of thing China does. That's the kind of thing China does. And one of the ladies who spoke here mentioned that Africa is weak. You know why Africa is weak? We don't have nuclear weapons. <laughs> People may not like nuclear weapons. I'm sorry, but uh, North, Korea, North Korea is a poor country. But today, you know why nobody will want to mess with them? They have nuclear weapons. You have to think twice before you go near them. Yes, they may be poor. Everybody is trying to appease them or trying to negotiate, trying to work around things. But nobody talks big to them because they have their own nuclear weapons. Just like India can come to the table, they have nuclear weapons. When they are negotiating, they are negotiating on a balanced ground with you. And they're saying, dude, you didn't, you didn't give us a good deal. Can you imagine today? America keeps telling China, don't buy oil from Russia. But they keep buying it from Russia. Why? Because America wants India in their corner. Russia wants India in their corner. Both are begging Russia, begging India today. <laughs> Do you know why? They have a good leader who knows what, he, what he's doing for his country. And nobody will blackmail him. And of course, they have nuclear weapons to back them up if you mess with them. They'll tell you it's, it is mutual destruction, so you're not going to mess with us. So forget it. Let's talk about business. So until African leaders learn to be true statesmen, and stop being corrupt and selling out their countries and stop being selfish. We are not going to move much forward. <laughs> we will not. So the best way we can do it is get leaders who are true statesmen, who can look out for the country and the people. If we don't do that, I don't care how much we discuss it. I don't care how much we cry out. The West will always put us in their pocket and walk away. I hear the mic. Wow, thank you very much. Very somber, somber delivery there. Um, it's interesting to note that Niger has uranium um, that powers parts of the electrical grid in Paris and France as a country. But 80% of Niger is in darkness. 80%. 80%. Let us sink in. And uh, my brother, he came, did mention that we, we need to sell our gas. But we can use gas for electricity, but we need to sell it. Then I asked him, do we have light? Oh, no, we don't have light yet, but we need to sell our gas. EK, I disagree with you on that. We need to generate electricity. Because for crying out loud, this is 2023. There is no development or advancement in anything. 
without electricity. Many parts of the world do not have fluctuating power. I wish we can see that our power problem is our biggest problem as Africans. Um, Oga Jones, there's something you mentioned about uh, the Middle East. Let me bring you closer, although not too far from the Middle East. Egypt. I was in Cairo a few days ago. I was there last time, 2017. I made a tweet about this. Egypt has changed in the last six years much more than Saudi did or your, the UAE. You need to go to Egypt. They've done 20,000 um, kilometers of road. They've gener- added 50,000 megawatts. They've in fact, Egypt now is the new Dubai. Egypt. Guess what? It's a dictatorship. There was a coup in Egypt that overthrew Morsi. I don't know if you guys remember. The Muslim Brotherhood guy overthrew, and I think he's been killed. Conveniently, the West has not acknowledged it as a coup. But massive investment is going on. Uh, so the coup has worked in Egypt, if you want to argue, based on development. So let me throw the Egypt in the mix. While you're thinking about coups, what's going on in Africa? Egypt is a, is a case where they are seeing massive development. And my argument is that it's not clear to Egyptian leaders after the Arab Spring that you need to fear the people. Because Muslim, uh, uh, is it Mubarak that was there for 33 years was removed during the uprising of 2011 during the Arab Spring. Today, Egyptian leaders, they are doing well for their people. Maybe West Africa can learn one or two things from Egypt. Um, I did invite um, someone up here. Chinonso, wow. How have you been, sir? It's been a minute. Um, <laughs> we, are, we, are still in the fight. we are still in that fight. We start. That fight will start. We see that fight. I know. I know, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Greetings to everyone. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Greetings. Yes, no, so welcome. I've been asking after you. Wow. <laughs> nice to and, uh, have you back. I know, I know. I took some break. I needed that mental rest, you know. <laughs> so I took some break just to get some mental rest and then come back. But that's great. I see you guys are doing really great. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, all eyes on the judiciary. Um, on the Niger issue, um, I just wanted to comment a little bit, Steve, if you don't mind. Just, you know, what is, you know, I, I understand that, you know, nobody's supporting um, the military coup, but what is the difference between military coup and uh, electoral fraud? You know, like, what is really the difference? You know, it, it amazed me when I kind of look at what is going on that ECOWAS, um, especially Tinubu, the current president select in Nigeria, is fighting trying to remove the military to install the man who came in through electoral fraud. I think what ECOWAS need to do is to listen to the voice of the people. See, democracy is for the people. So you should listen to the voice of the people. You know, I I don't care about all these technicalities and trying to, you know, okay, because we talked about this are military, this are democracy and all that. They should listen to the voice of the people. What are the people of Nigeria? What are they saying? What are they saying? They should listen to their voice first before they take any action. So if you're asking me, you know, um, what should we do or anything, I think the the equivalent should listen to the people. What are the people saying? If the people are supporting the military, then they should go into negotiation and find out how they can form a new government. So I don't understand all this. You want to use force. Do you want to force the people? Like, literally, like, what is happening in Nigeria right now? We're being forced the president. We're being forced. Mm-hmm. Like, we're literally, we don't have anything else. We don't have to say. And then you force the people, and you don't expect the people to react? Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Like, I keep asking this question. You want to go into Niger, and then, you know, enforce them to get the president to continue to be a president. Mm-hmm. And the people are telling you, we don't want this man. And you're not listening to the people. Then who are you fighting for? Are you just fighting for the West? Or are you doing this just to prove a point? See, the office of the president is for the people, right? It's for him to lead the people. So the people that you want to lead said, we don't want you. Currently, right now, the military has formed a government in our country, and we support them for now because we prefer them over the 
over the other man. So what do you want to do about it? What are you going to do about it? This is how we're being deceived. You know what the military are bad, they are evil. I definitely understand that everybody wants democracy. You don't want um, a leader to be to be imposed on you. But that's what we're experiencing right now in Nigeria. So can we call this, what do we call this one? Electoral fraud or electoral coup? Conducted by Mahoud or whatever his name is called. So right now we're in a situation that we're discussing how they will solve another country's situation. That is the situation we're in. A group of people that is not even up to 1% of Nigerians sat down and imposed the president on us, whether we like it or not. They killed, they killed our parents, they killed our brothers, they killed our sisters, they meant them to make sure that they imposed the president, the whoever they call the president right now on us, and we're discussing Niger, where they didn't even kill anybody. They just want to save their country from the worst manipulation and all kind of things going on there. So please, we are the one in trouble. Nigeria is the one. Nigeria is not in trouble. Oh. Nigeria, is, if Ecowas need to save, they need to save Nigeria. I'm telling you the truth. They need to save us. They need to save us, Steve. They don't need to be discussing Niger. Niger do not have any problem. The citizens are not complaining. The citizens are not crying. They are trying to solve their own problem, trying to take the power out of the West. And you're telling me that we should focus on Niger. No, we should focus on Nigeria. Nigeria is in trouble. Nigeria is not even experiencing any terrorist attack that much like Nigeria. How many people are being killed every day in Nigeria? And somebody is busy having a meeting how they will solve the problem of Niger. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Like, what literally, what is going on? Like, like, wait, what is sorry going to interject. Like, sorry to interject. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry to interject. 36 soldiers were killed by slippers wearing terrorists in Ninja State the day before yesterday. 36 soldiers slaughtered. I want to go and interfere in Niger. Sorry, go ahead, my brother. No, take your attention away from the military and focus on the people. Leave the military alone and focus on the people. What do the people want? Are the people free now? Are they happy? That is what matters. If the people are happy, that is what matters. Are you telling me that the Niger, 80% or 90% of Niger, they are illiterate and they are dumb, they don't know what they want, ECOWAS knows the best for them? Come on. No. It's like telling us that Nigerians, we don't know what we want because we want people to be so we are dumb and we don't know what we want. So they should force, they force somebody on us. Now look at the, ministry, uh, the ministers, look at the list. What do Kayamo know about aviation? Nigeria needs saving, guys. Guys, I don't know. Maybe, you know, like, I'm not expressing the hardship of Nigeria, but I, I know people who are, who are suffering, who doesn't even, nobody talks about job now. What people are talking about is survival, just to survive in a day. That is what is going on in a country that needs saving, not Niger. So, bro, this is my own open mic that, Nigeria needs saving. If ECOWAS is doing meeting and they're not talking about how to save Nigeria from this crook, this gang up that just happened, this electoral fraud and coup that just happened in Nigeria, and they're talking about Niger because they want to save face. Come on. People in Nigeria don't have any issue. They're happy and they should leave their country alone. Let them leave them alone, guys. Just say it the way it is. Stop trying to be politically correct. Just try, see, stop being political correct. Say it the way it is. The people are happy. That's what matters. Nigerians are not happy. We are sad. We are devastated. We are angry. We are pissed. Anyway, Steve, please. Thank you. Because of my mental, Thank my you. mental situation, right? You're not so welcome, <laughs> bro. It's because of the love I have for Nigeria, bro. I am okay. I don't have. Nah, so, I, nah, so. I understand. <laughs> Andre, yeah, there's a way this space works. You have to mute it. Eh? I know you are trying to chime in. Um, no, so thank you for coming up. I know you were just kind of quietly listening in, but you know, now it's been a long time. I know I couldn't have allowed you uh, just sneak by. You know, you have to come and give us some of this heat. After all, you've had time to even recuperate. Some of us, <laughs> we have not had break. How, we, how can we have break? Under instructors, the Ariwachik. We can't have break. Hello. Right? So, um, thank you so much. David, you want to mute your mic? Uh, I will get to you. 
I'll get to you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like your, your inscription, right of expression. This is an open mic space. We try to allow everybody uh, their views. Um, we don't want to gag anybody. So thank you, Nonso. You really brought the heat. The level of hypocrisy of those that come to say, ah, if you go to all these Agbado people, this I don't know what to do. You know, one problem is that we are all Nigerians, right? So you have to tolerate Agbado. They are praising this useless invasion. Oh. They're saying that Nigeria army is strong. I don't know. I don't know. Lolugad, then I go when I see Lolugad, I will ask him some question. Anyway, it but that's never, <laughs> it will be never no, Mr. Steven. What's <laughs> the the, the, the uh, Chino so is just absolutely right. Sorry, I I want to chime in. The fact, see, the hypocrisy is just annoying because how can somebody wanting to invade Niger? You want to go and fight war with Niger? And instead of negotiating with them, and somebody somewhere in Niger State wanting to negotiate with terrorists after over 30 military men were, got, were shot, were killed, were brutally murdered. I don't understand. Like, that's even where they're supposed to carry the war to, to wipe out every element of those slippers wearing uh, uh, terrorists that did they that are did they that. are mining gold for them now they are work they are, they are workers you want to negotiate mm. that is where they're supposed to take the war to to wipe out every element of any human slippers wearing terrorist bandits that is carrying AK-47 in that bush they want to negotiate but you can go to you can you can go to uh, another country to go and fight war instead of negotiating and bringing peace and calm to the place. A country where the, the citizens of that country are, oh, are, are, are dancing and happy with the coup. Please, someone should help me make sense out of this thing. It's getting annoying by the day. Thank you, Ari let, let, let me Let me chime in a little bit, um, Stephen, if you don't mind. Go ahead, then. And, and, Andre, if Bloom will go after you. Yeah, no, so um, once more, thank you for um, coming in and bringing You know, this boils down to what I was saying earlier on, but maybe so many people did not understand. Maybe my presentation wasn't much, much understood or something. Like Arewa Chick says, make it make sense to every well-meaning Nigeria why you shouldn't put the whole energy, human resource, money and everything towards getting your own country to a place of security before you cannot think of going to get another man's country to be secured. Make it make sense to me why a family in Nigeria should get 8,000 Naira as a poverty alleviation fund for taking out the petrol subsidy while the senators, the lawmakers, the people who are supposed to stand up and speak against this evil and say, no, this is not fair to the people. Why they have to go home sharing 72 billion? Make it make sense to me how Abia states, past governors, went through their eight years, never reformed Abba, and Alex Oti, who has just been two months in office have just reformed the cemetery road. Anybody that knows that cemetery road in Aba will understand what I'm talking about. Make it make sense to me that the same allocation was given to different people, but different results are being seen. What am I saying in essence? 80% of the problem we have in Nigeria is caused by Nigerians. The two other 20% can only be taken care of when we were able, when we are able to take care of this 80%. No wonder my principle, my honorable principle, 
His Excellency Dr. Peter Obi said when people ask him of what was going on, you know, during and after the election, no wonder he said, and I quote, the problem we have in our country is our problem. And we are going to solve it internally. We don't have to invite people from outside to come and solve our problem. Make it make sense to me that I saw a video of Nigerian soldiers who have been asked to go and get ready for this sham war that Tunumbu wants to fight because it's not Nigeria. It's, this is Tunumbu going for this war against Niger. That I see a man standing in front of a very heavy war machine with just a T-shirt and his jacket jeans as a military officer. There was nothing like a protective on him. And I saw the second man standing right by him, just carrying his two hands in his head. Meaning, is this how I'm going to end my life? Is this how, how did I get myself? Like, you could read 1001 meaning from his posture. Make it make sense to any human being on earth. Why Festus the senior advocate of nonsense has to become the aviation minister. Make it make sense to me, the man they chose to be the chief of defense staff that has no business whatsoever being in that position. Are you going to tell me that it was a man in Europe who sat down and wrote these names? Are you going to tell me that it was the Westerners who were in that Senate seat Asking these people questions, couldn't they have gotten up and said, you know what, this list that was sent does not match with the positions that these people are going to occupy. Can you give us a better list? When will the people, and when I mean the people, I, 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 I would love for Nigerians to, for one minute, set up their eyes only on the presidency and try to put it on the people who represent us, people in the House of Rep, people in the Federal Rep constituency, the senators, who are the lawmakers. When will they get up? When is that time when they will arise to say, this is below standards? We are not going to go below standards. Let us at least go within the standards even if we can get above the standards. When will they do that? When will they recognize their responsibility? And when will the Nigerian people stand up to hold them accountable for not recognizing their responsibilities? The time is here and the time is now. Do you know what? If we leave those people to keep going the way they are going, even when P.O., reclaims his mandate, these stupid politicians, these evil people that have found themselves on the seats of the realms of affairs are still going to frustrate his administration. The time to keep them accountable is now. The time to hold them and start nipping them by the board is now. We cannot just sit down and just wait for Obi to reclaim the mandate. That cleanup exercise needs to start now. And I yield my mic. Thank you very much. Um, let me rush to Andre. We've been waiting for a minute. Andre, are you there? Yeah, I'm um, here. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Now, Nije Echo was. Crisis and all things. Wow. Well, who is ECOWAS? ECOWAS is what? West African states, right? Comprising with all the countries in it. And the bulk of it is who? Nigeria. Now, definitely the head, which is the cap, is off. Because right now, the country itself is in tumor, having issues about its electoral process of the new presidency. Now, from all indications, it's noted that whoever is 
seated on that seat is a puppet for the Western countries. And he's seen doing things on his own accord. This is not somebody trying to break his veto power. This is someone doing his thing on his own accord. In helping his words, his masters. You went to this, the Senate House to, to, uh, to seek approval. You were not granted. You went on your own. Now, have you seen the viral video going on? Like that lady was saying, there's a viral video about, you see people going to war. They are pushing a tank. Very shameful. They are going to war. They are going to war with who? Do you think you are going to, you, you think those two West is coming to help you? Going to a war with a country that is trying to say no for having um, imperialists in their country for how many years? We have to stand to say what's right. It's a shame that people stand for what for criminality. No wonder Christ said in his in his word, in his holy book, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Like, like to, to be honest, when I see someone, okay, yes, Waziri PDP can still be acceptable, but I still see that one as a thief. Forgive me for saying that. Because yes, it's, he was the one who sold our national assets. He was selling it at a very cheap rate. Fucking, imagine saying your national asset $30 million, something like billions of dollars. He went behind to buy them. He was coming back again to take this. Now, these are people you are going against. You have a man who comes to tell you that if you find anything wanting of him, take him down. Hello, did we lose you? I think he dropped the way forward. Andrea, I thought we lost you there a bit. Uh, round up, my brother. Okay. So as I was saying, so they are in support of the coup that is going on. That's to tell you the real sense of everything. Just like Chino also said, the power is from the people. What you are spending is the... Is the it is, is the taxes from who? The people. We have to get it right. They are accountable for us. You should know everything, every break. Uh, let the system work. You have other countries now that you can make negotiations with. You could fight against in your 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 um your your reserve by bringing other reserve but not for you to de deregulate the economy. Deregulating will keep plunging into it. The Naira is still going to keep falling because we are deregulating. Every time we have issues, we deregulate in Nigeria. It's the children on bond that will suffer this. Please, let's do the right thing. It's what other countries are clamoring for. We are tired. Don't come to our backyard to be stealing from us. Come and negotiate. Tell us this what you want. Okay, in, in reference, if you want to put company, yes, you we have 80% of our people in that company. They can bring 20% of your people. And you have to go through this term. Thank you, for, uh, Andrew. I think um, I hear your um, very passionate um, submission of greed. Are you Thank you very much. Are you the mic, please? Thank you. All. God bless you. All. God bless Africa. Uh, God bless uh, Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, a, a lot of passion in the house. Um, a lot of frustrations being um, echoed out. But let's let's drill down a little bit. And uh, the topic is Niger Ecowas crisis update. What should we do? Um, that means uh, the crux of the matter has to be solutions. What can Africans, West Africans in particular, do to forestall or stop this crisis in our region? What are the solutions? What has failed that has led to this military junta moving from country to country, whereby other leaders now are scared, which is why they want to go and stop it? Not because they want to entrench democracy, really. They are afraid of their own, for their own head. What can we do? I think one of the things we can do is to participate in our processes, like we, we in Nigeria have largely gotten involved politically 
to get involved. I think we should not just stay and limit ourselves to our countries. We should know what's happening in the next country and the next and the next and the next. What that means is connect with folks beyond your country of origin, particularly if they're Africans. I'm saying that to say you should follow each other on the space here. Um, beyond just the online chatter, we need to hold our leaders accountable. We need to ensure that if we say we have a democracy, let it count. In Nigeria today, there's a hashtag, all eyes on the judiciary, because we, the people, are saying our vote must count. We should be able to call out people like Paul B of Cameroon, who doesn't allow opposition. In Cameroon, once you're in opposition, you go to jail or you die suddenly. ECOWAS should be, should be going to Cameroon to, to restore constitutional order. ECOWAS. Well, Cameroon is not in West Africa here, but they are back behind Nigeria, so I don't understand this cutting of Central Africa. But my point is, there's enough problem in Africa within our countries. Our votes are not counting. The will of the people are being stifled. Freedoms are being uh, truncated. Leaders are sitting tight, changing the rules. Like in Senegal, they've, they've arrested the opposition. You saw a lot of protests in Senegal. How many of us came to support that? We need to support each other. The truth is the Africa problem is almost, they almost copy each other. They mirror each other, one country to the other. So solutions, solutions, solutions. What should we do? How do we organize instead of agonizing? Nigerians in particular, for us that are waiting for the judiciary, what are we going to do if they do what they do best? Subvert the law. What do we do? Are you thinking about that? Or do we believe that by trending the hashtag, they will change their mind and do well uh, and do what they've never really done, which is care for the people? How do we bring the people action using our democratic constitutional rights to move the ball in terms of bringing actual change? No matter what we do or say here, what matters is what we can effect on the ground. How much change can we bring? How come 200 million people seem powerless in the face of less than a thousand people that claim they're leaders who we never voted for? Someone asks, so what is Professor Skyamu doing in aviation? Is he a pilot? Has he run an airline? Is he an aeronautic engineer? Has he even done ticketing? Is he a travel agent? Or is it just by entering plane and going somewhere makes you qualified to be an aviation minister? After you do propaganda during elections, create a bigotry and ethnic sentiments, support violence and rigging, they reward you with aviation ministry? Or is it the WK that is now the FCT minister? What's the credentials? What are we using as basis? We should call out those leaders that parade themselves as Democrats. They are not. When you look at the ECOWAS leaders, which one of them has the support of his people? Which one? I would argue that the cool leaders in Niger have more support than every single ECOWAS leader. That's my own argument. So which one is working? Who reflects the will of the people? So let us go to solutions while we'll air our opinion. Thank you for joining the space. I'd like to bring a lady in now uh, just to um, keep up the conversation. Ladies, request the mic. I'd like to hear your view on the situation. That means I might want to go to Omoye. Omoye, if you don't mind my asking, are you from Edo? Yes, I am. Good morning. From oh, over so here. You're my sister now. So I just followed you because I'm trying to connect with all the those in the house. So don't don't okay. feel bad if you're not from our beautiful state. Uh, Omo, yeah, you have the mic. I'm biased in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I pre Man, kudos to you. This live started what? Since yesterday. You guys have been here since yesterday. By my own time, though. Wow. Man, I lost my heart. You know, it's amazing to see. Uh, so you're talking about solutions. Part of what I said yesterday was that for me, it's action time. We've done enough social media and all of that. We need to be on the ground. Literally, every state should be littered with people. We're over 200 million Nigerians. If we have uh, uh, about 50 million across from every state protesting, Peacefully, 
protesting the with the, the fact that they want to in, in, invade uh, Niger, pro protesting the fact that the um, election was stolen. And also, we need to start emphasizing, I like what you said when you were talking earlier, we need to start calling out these people that impose themselves on their people. They, they, they're the ones who actually did the coup. I like what Dr. Arikana said. I think it was on Arise News. What is going on in the Francophone countries is a political realignment. It's not a coup. The people are sick and tired of, of people, strangers. They're the ones with the resources, but people from outside are coming to take their resources. Oh, oh my, yeah, you got a call, I suspect. Mm, let's see if you'll be able to reconnect. Um, I okay, see can you hear me now? Sorry. There you go. Yes, oh, no, okay. that's fine. I, <laughs> I apologize for that. So, you know, I, I think that we need our emphasis while we're talking. I think we need to increase the volume on the fact that the African leaders are the ones that actually did the coup. We need to flip the script because that's the truth. The people in Nigeria are very happy with their government. They are happy with what's going on. I don't see any sad faces. I don't. You know, so we need to flip the script on them and say, look, these are the people that are imposing themselves on the people. These are the real cool leaders. What have they done for the people? Look at how impoverished their people are. Look at the way Nigeria. Did you ever think that there'll be a day where people, Nigerians will come out and be dying because of hunger? I never thought that would ever happen because there were always farms. People could go to the farm, plant the food you want, eat the food you want. So I, I personally, it's been action time for a long time. One way or the other, all die and I die. We're all going to die anyway. And then for those <clears throat> people that, <clears throat> sadly, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm, there's those people who um, recently, I think somebody just committed suicide again and all that. I'm begging you. All of us are hit one way or the other. Please, I beg you, don't, do not do that. Wait. When we get on the ground, that is when it is more effective. If, if, if you feel so, okay, you know, it's awful to say this, but I have to put it out there because you're just killing yourself for free. You know, do it on the ground because it's time. We cannot let these people get away with this. We cannot wait for the judiciary. The judiciary is not going to do anything. They will not. The handwriting is already on the wall. They are not going to do anything. So we need to be shouting from the top of our lungs and calling out the real cool leaders, the ones that are impoverishing their people, the ones that are selling out their people. We need to be asking them the question, how did you get into the position that you're in? How? How did, did the people vote you in or did you rig yourself in? Which one you do? So let's start calling out the real cool leaders because these old ancient gagoos that are there sitting down, sitting on top of the destinies of young people that don't, that refuse to live. Look at Paul Bia in Cameroon. The man don't, he don't destroy people's destiny. Speaking when they're born 40 years ago, since then, that man has been ruling. How has he impacted his people positively? The man doesn't even know where he is again. He's disoriented. That's how old he is. So we need to increase the volume on them. We need to be telling them there's no coup in ha which Niger. No coup they happen. Guinea, not you know, Burkina Faso. Say what they happen. Now political realignment. The real coup is in the echoa. Let them freaking talk to themselves. That's what we need to be doing everywhere we go. Thank you very much. There is no political coup in Niger, but just a political alignment. And that is what we need to be doing all over Africa. Uh, Jumani hicho kilikuwa kipindi chetu cha leo katika special edition hii ya Naj Media Center kipindi kilikuwa Cyber Lounge na leo tulikuwa tumezungumzia 
kwa urefu nadhani <laughs> tumekaa zaidi ya masaa matatu juu ya um, involvement ya ECOWAS katika uh, Afrika Magharibi uh, kwenye uh, sakata la Niger ambapo uh, kumeanza vita na mvutano baina ya uh, nchi za Afrika baadhi ambazo zinaungana na Niger halafu ECOWAS ambayo inaungwa mkono na nchi za Ulaya pamoja na Marekani. Sauti kubwa tulizosikia hapa katika kipindi chetu cha leo ni kutoka Nigeria na kama mnafujua kwamba Nigeria ina involvement kubwa katika ECOWAS kwa sababu mwenyekiti wake anatoka Nigeria. Na kama tulizosikia hapa watu wengi kutoka Nigeria hawa muungi mkono. Asanteni kwa kuwa nasi kwa zaidi ya masaa matatu kama nilivyosema hii ilikuwa ni special edition ya Cyber Lounge na tuliletea kipindi hichi kwa lugha ya Kiingereza. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we were discussing ECOWAS involvement in Niger right here on Naj Media Center on Cyber Lounge. Thank you and tune in again next week. My name is Naj and goodbye.